Yes. <laughs> yes, you are skilled. More skilled and more powerful than any young apprentice I have met in these many, many years. What will you do to me? <laughs> and how can that matter? My, my, my object in coming to see you was to learn. I would learn, even to the last. Mm, commendable. I am going to enjoy inhabiting a body and a mind so thirsty for knowledge, as well as one that is innately skilled in the art. Very well. I will explain. My last lesson, apprentice. You cannot know, young man, the horrors of growing old. How well I remember my first life, and how well I remember the terrible feeling of anger and frustration I felt when I realized that I, the most powerful magic user who had ever lived, was destined to be trapped in a weak and wretched body that was being consumed by age. My mind was sound. Indeed, I was stronger mentally than I had ever been in my life. But all this power, all this vast knowledge would be wasted. Turned to dust. Devoured by worms. I wore the red robes then. <sighs> you start. Are you surprised? Taking the red robes was a conscious, cold-blooded decision made after seeing how best I could gain. In neutrality, one learns better, being able to draw from both ends of the spectrum and being beholden to neither. I went to Gillian, <laughs> the god of neutrality, with my plea to be allowed to remain upon this plane and extend my knowledge. But in this, the god of the book could not help me. Humans were his creation. And it was because of my impatient human nature and the knowledge of the shortness of my life that I had pressed on with my studies. I was counseled to accept my fate. I see comprehension in your eyes, apprentice. In a way, I am sorry to have to destroy you. I think we could have developed a rare understanding. But to make a long story short, I walked out into the darkness Cursing the Red Moon, I ask that I be allowed to look upon the Black. The Queen of Darkness heard my prayer and granted my request. Donning the Black Robes, I dedicated myself to her service, and in return, I was taken to her plane of existence. I have seen the future. I have lived. She gave me this pendant, so that I am able to choose a new body during my stay in this time. And when I choose to cross the boundaries of time and enter the future, there is a body prepared and ready to accept my soul. Tell me how it works. T tell me what will happen to me. I will place this upon your breast, right over your heart, and slowly, you will feel your life force start to ebb from your body. The pain is, I believe, quite excruciating. But it will not last long, apprentice, if you do not struggle against it. Give in, and you will quickly lose consciousness. From what I have observed, fighting only prolongs the agony. Are there no words to be spoken? Ha! <laughs> of course! You are about to hear them. They will be the last sounds you ever heard. That 
send you back here, little mage? <laughs> no. I came myself. I am master of the tower now. That's impossible! You underestimated me. You wretched part of my life force from me during the test, in return for protecting me from the drow. You forced me to live a life of constant pain in a shattered body. Doomed me to dependence on my brother. You taught me to use the dragon orb and kept me alive when I would have died at the great library of Palanthos. During the War of the Lance, you helped me drive the Queen of Darkness back to the Abyss, where she was no longer a threat to the world. Or to you. Then, when you had gained enough strength in this time, you had intended to return to the future and claim my body. You would have become me! That is all correct. What did you intend to do about it? Murder me? No. <laughs> I intend to become you! Fool! The only way you could do that is to use this on me. And it is protected against all forms of magic by charms. The power which you have no conception. Little mage. Yes, protected from all forms of magic. But not protected against slight of hand. Not protected against the skills of a common street illusionist. <laughs> in a second floor guest room filled with tall ales and taller tales. Join a group of grown men intent on discussing the intricacies of fantasy and science fiction. Tim Gilbert Media presents... Don't just that we! I think about it right to the back of it. Oh, it's a Hello, all you fans of Sylvia Brown, Shirley MacLaine, and newcomer to the list of those who can compete with the dead, Castlehop Burford. This is the Dungeons and Dweebs Podcast, episode 21, Dragonlance, War of the Twins, part one. I'm your host, Bob. Are you alone in the dark, afraid, surrounded by the pungent flurry? And like a handful of other visitors to the High Clarice Tower, you suffer from having a poor quality mattress. Keep tuning in, because later on in the show, we'll give you details on how you too can have a restful night's sleep, devoid of troubling demonic influence. Fisty Slave Caller II. But I'm not alone. Across the table from me, in his bid to become the most powerful IT director in history, he studied under the revered tech guru, Mr. Pants. But finally, when it was time to ascend to the Office of Supremacy, to become master of both Fortran and Unix, a battle of epic proportions ensued. 
Arcane lines of code were summoned. Servers and web filters went down. But in the end, only one IT dude remained. It's Luke. Wow, that was, you know, surprisingly <laughs> not, like, in you, like just chock full of innuendo. I'm, yeah, I, yeah that, that one was a little And especially, well. Well, you know, when getting to the fight between Fisty and Raceland. Stop uh, calling that, him Fisty. That is, <laughs> no. <laughs> that is chock full of... Yes. Yeah. Innuendo openings. I, I'm proud of my PG. <laughs> I am well, proud of myself. I'm glad you're proud of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here we are. What what episode are we on? What'd you say? 21! 21. Really? No, it's not plus 10. <laughs> um, what? I don't know. The podcast can finally legally drink. Um, it's a, it's a good Our listeners can take us out on a date. Hey! <laughs> uh, it's, it's Hey, what do we got? Uh, the Dragonlance Legends. Yeah. Uh, Volume two. We're going to talk about book one. Book one of volume two. And but only hey. book one. And only book one. Yes, we're going to keep it. We're keeping it tight. Yeah. Yeah, tight. keeping it tight, keeping high, it high and tight, high and tight, and tight like a good military haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Which, when you see one of those out tonight at a bar, don't engage. <laughs> People sporting the high and tight usually end up in fights by the end of the night. Well, either that or that, either that or high and tight is the girl you're looking for at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was going to make the joke. I was oh, gonna say, I was going to say I knew that girl in college. Um, at, at any rate, he's already started talking. It's it's okay. We're kind of going free flow. We're all feeling weird. Uh, we're, but, 21. Yeah, we're twenty one. Twenty one. <laughs> to my left, you know, he saved my life a few, quite a few times. He's the toughest hunk of junk in the galaxy. <laughs> it's Club. <laughs> Greetings, warriors. The summer is quickly coming to an end, and your old Uncle Club continues to try and squeeze every moment out of this time of year. August is one of my favorite months. Warm days fighting dragons with my plus two keen longsword while wearing fur trim briefs as the maidens swoon over my tan glistening abs. Cooler nights keeping warm with flagons of hoppy, citrusy ale, and buxom wenches around the campfire. Wait a minute. Am I drunkenly sitting in just my tidy whities in my backyard? <laughs> again. <laughs> Not again! Yes, yes, officer, I'll put out the trash can fire. <laughs> yes, yes, I know it's the sixth time this summer this has happened. You know, yes, sir, I realize the neighbors don't like me singing strange songs and waving around a rake handle in the middle of the night. It's okay, it's school, it's school starts soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll be back to normal soon. <laughs> Across the table from me, he likes his coffee like he likes his women, hot and tan. He once got busy in a Burger King bathroom. He's the owl to my Rorschach, the snowman to my bandit, the big man on the podcast. He's Paul. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Oh. You know, there's a lot of stories I can't say on this podcast because it's PG. You, you gotta keep some of those stories, especially the Burger King one. You gotta, <laughs> the Burger King one? No, I can't repeat that Are we PG? On, I feel I mean, like we're PG-13. We might and be. we're flirting. We're just easing down the pants that's, of PG-13. <laughs> of R. <laughs> yeah, of R. Yeah, we're, yeah. 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 So that, that story, I'm, I'm not I'm Yes, you know what? Okay, private. okay, you got Paul did his taxes in a Burger King bag. Bathroom once he got busy. <laughs> dude, dude, I mean, taxes are important. You have to do them. All right. You always have to make sure you do them. I was running late. I just, I had to do two things at once. I see him with one of those calculators with a spool of paper. <laughs> just, he's got his tiptoes I'm, up and he's. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting on the crapper. It's just all I hear is a. That's it. Yeah, just there's reams of paper just, coming under the door. Just with his whopper out. <laughs> Don't eat in the bathroom. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Bob, no. how's it going? Uh, well, it's been it, fantastic because here we are on book two of a trilogy. Yay! Which is usually seen as, uh, a lot of times, uh, the, the middle part of a trilogy can be the weaker uh, of, you know, you, you have kind of your beginning, you have your end, and the middle is where authors and movie producers... <laughs> Empire, Empire Strikes Back. <clears throat> Empire Strikes Back is the one that... The best one. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, so that's it, the thing. It, it is changed you, that paradigm. You either have Empire Strikes Back or you have X-Men 2. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's, there, I think there's uh-huh. a little bit of foreshadowing in, in yeah. what you said there. Ja- Jaws 2, although, you know... The third one is even worse, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm waiting for Jaws it's, it's in space. Split. Do they have a 3D I'm, Dragonlance experience? Because uh, It's just the Dra- Draconians. Dragonlance yeah. 3D. I'm sure. Well, could they re-release that on Blu-ray in 3D? 
Because that would be great. That would be horrifying. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> terrible. Fly over legions of draconians in three dimensions. I'm good. <laughs> Still the I'm same good. 100 copy and paste effects waving the same arm at you. <laughs> Just, ah. It's it's like the draconian's arm and tongue are popping off the screen and Lorana is weirdly like just flat on the screen. This, <laughs> the merging. My Lord. I just hate it all. <sighs> but uh hey, when we did uh Time of the Twins, uh for the most part, I think we had three white mages and Luke, you were the lone red mage on that one. You know they say you can learn more as a red mage. You can learn from both the good and the bad. Yes. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, you know, it, I, so Luke's a little dragon lands by, yeah, and it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we don't judge. <laughs> um, no. Who put, a, who put a nickel in you today? <laughs> We're twenty one. <laughs> <We're, laughs> we rule the world. <laughs> Actually, just I, easing down the pants of R. <laughs> Actually, I think I, I did find the Dragonlance movie on Blu-ray, but it's a Blu-ray double feature. Uh, two movies, one disc. Oh boy. What? What's the really? second movie? Why is there a the second movie? It's it an includes... extended version <laughs> with cleaned up oh, visual effects. Oh, no, 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 never mind, never mind. Uh, never mind. Director's cut? No, uh, Dragonlance is just a recommended buy with it. Oh. Uh, this is the Dungeons & Dragons two-movie collection. Includes Dungeons & Dragons and Dungeons & Dragons Wrath of the Dragon God. Oh, okay. I've uh, watched both mind. of those. No, I, I, do, I do not believe that the Dragonlance mm. movie ever made it to Blu-ray. Oh. Unfortunately. Nor will it probably ever. But I want to watch those wonderful dragons. Like the holiday special. That I have started a change.org petition. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, please don't. Please don't look me no. No, 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 no. Uh, don't forget. So, yeah. Forget getting Flint, Michigan water. We need to. We need to get rid of that. Blue ray. Put it on hold. President Trump. Yeah. We need your help. Yeah. Until I'm comfortable in my home with a Blu-ray, I'm not going to extend one meager dime to help people. I've watched. Michigan. I've watched it. It's a good movie. I like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie. It's an incredible movie. It's, it's a stupendous it's movie. It's, it's great. It's almost as good as me. You know, I I, fought, I I I was the one that said that we had to do this movie. It was all me. Me. Well, that got slightly <laughs> political. There. Wow. Know, before we get too political, uh, I I'm. It is hot in here, Luke. It's always is, hot in and here. And we have an air conditioning unit in here, which yeah. we can't turn on while we're recording. I know, but it's three. Still, or four. <laughs> Sorry, I was already counting you guys. Uh, yeah. Four hot, sweaty men. <laughs> One second floor recording studio. I feel that was a. F I feel like watching that. Slip. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> I mean, what you do on your personal time, man, that's up to you. Bob. You know what, let's, let's grab some drinks. Yes. It's warm, Bob, right. I got buy. it this time. Oh. All right. Well, so, I'll buy all this right. time. I'm feeling my dear, generous. My dear, no, it's okay. I know I'm only wearing tidy whities but it's allowed. Come here, can we get some drinks? Oh, I swear to you, man. The woman with the blue board. dragon? She brought me up to her room Boy, last night. did she have good Where's time. my coin purse? Why don't you fellas follow me with my coat? I'll show you all my glory is good. What'll it be, boys? Tavern talk. All right, well, we've got our drinks. Uh, we're all laying in hammocks underneath the tall Celestian trees. We're in wooden chairs in a hot room. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, prefer to mind, think that's... that we are under tall Celestian trees. I know, with the trees of what Solace. Did you order? Solace be <laughs> Celestian? Sure. Mm. Yes. I don't, I, know. I don't know. A Solace boy. Can't survive. He could. Mm. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for yes. it. Wait for it. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, we've got a lot of feedback to get to on this episode, and we don't want to cut it short. So, but we do have a few nerdy things. So, Club, what's been going on in your nerd universe? Nerd. I've been in Vegas for the last week. What? And yes. Absolute blast. No, I'm not nerdy enough to be able to count cards or, you know, actually I've made any money. <laughs> um, but in Vegas, and I understand there are a couple different places around the country, there's a company um, the, called The Void that has what is termed as the Star Wars experience. Mm. And it is super cool. You go into the you you go into this place. You get the you get a vest and you put on VR and you put on this big VR helmet. Okay. And then you walk around shoot and then you walk around a warehouse shooting stormtroopers. Oh, I thought you said that. I thought you were gonna say the Star Wars experience was ruined expectations. But never mind. No, <laughs> it's, it's it, the whole thing. The whole storyline takes place right before Rogue One. Oh, you get a little briefing from like the actual dude who plays Cassian. Okay. In Rogue wow. One, wow. K two S O is with you like during the mission, nice. but it is it's the VR was so much better than I thought it actually could be. It right. was, 
like seeing, you know, when you see the movie shots and you, mm. then you play the video game and you realize those are the cutscenes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. It, you were actually playing the cutscene. Oh. Like you could hold your arms out in front of you and they were your arms, but oh. in like that, you were hiding as a stormtrooper in the in a, the Mustafarian base. Oh, that sounds like So awesome. there's like lava awesome. and stuff around and there's stuff spraying at you like <laughs> off the walls yeah. when you go by the lava. Oh. And then you're shooting it and then finally you get figured out and you're, you're shooting at stormtroopers. Right. And the biggest thing that got me was if you get hit by the stormtroopers, the vest punches you where you got oh, shot. Yes. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> about the, about, and it, it feels like a paintball. Oh, oh man, that's <laughs> awesome. So it just snap. <laughs> and it, it, very cool. I highly recommend if you guys are ever in one of the play, one of the areas that has this, go do it. It's really oh, cool. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And you walk through in like groups of four okay. or three. And I ended up being, it was just me. So I ended up being with this dude and like his 12 year old daughter. Right. And when you look through the VR goggles, you see them in their stormtrooper gear. Yeah. In the in, in the armor that you're all in. But it actually reads it well enough so that it was him and I and then this tiny little stormtrooper. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all proportional and if you didn't <laughs> get if you didn't do the aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper. Oh I did. I did. Okay. I did. Okay. 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 Good. okay. Now could you wear glasses? I'm somebody that I have terrible eyesight. I need glasses. Can you wear glasses with it? I think you can. Okay. Because uh, everything's padded in there. So oh, I, I, perfect. I think you can. I but need to go to Vegas. Just very cool. And then you get to the end, and all of a sudden you have this NPC that you're with, mm -hmm. and he's kind of guiding you through all this stuff. And then you get to the end, and about the NPC standing like directly in front of you, and all of a sudden a pipe comes out of nowhere and like skewers into the wall <laughs> right in front of you. <laughs> Wait, don't spoil too much. I'm going in October. I'm going to go to this. I know, but it's super cool because <laughs> you, you, you look over to a dark hallway, and there's... <sighs> Oh. And then you get your butt kicked. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, no, I, okay, it's all been spoiled, Claw. <laughs> no, it's cool. Okay. It's, I, I'll go again. There is also a Ghostbusters one, too, wow. that you can go Ooh, wow. that you can go through. We need to do a road trip. So, Dungeons yeah. Dreams road trip. There we dreams. go. Yeah. So, Paul, you said you had something going on as well. Well, this is a, this is a little bit of a weird one. Um, I went back to some old movies from my childhood, so 90s era, era I guess I would say. Mm. So a little bit pro earlier than the movies you would normally what, go to. Yeah, I don't but watch anything from the 90s. I know, you're, you're like a classic <laughs> 80s, 70s, give or take, right? Yeah. Uh, but it was National Treasure. Ooh. I, I had never watched that movie in its entirety. Excuse me? I, I, hold on, hold on. I had only watched it when it was on TV or things. You know, it was just there. So I decided I'm just going to sit down and watch it. And, oh, I'm, and let I'm me sorry. Tell you, that so, that sorry. actor, is, Nicolas Cage, yeah, he's is just fun. <laughs> All right. Can, can now, I, I know Luke has something to say about can I, this. Yeah, I'm just going to level with you guys. I absolutely love the movie National yeah. Treasure. Nice. I don't know why. I there's, there's a point in my life that I... You stole the Declaration of Independence? <laughs> I, shh. You found Ben Franklin's glasses. Shh. We can't talk about any of that. Okay. But there was a point in my life where, like, where I didn't have internet. Um, right. So all I had to go on were the DVDs that I owned. Yeah. I got National Treasure for Christmas one year. Yeah. And I just, like, I just, it was a, it's been a movie that, like, I've just, I've watched. And it's, like, it was one that I could always just put in and just kind of watch mm -hmm. and, you know. Do stuff, but yeah. come, come back. But I screen. actually love National Treasure. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't, I, I don't, I can't. So you and Paul are fighting right now. Yeah, over his yeah, dislike actually, of the movie. Actually, yeah, and we're actually we're moving out of this uh, house that was we this the impetus together. of you guys not living with each other yeah. anymore. Yeah. It's national yeah. treasure. We just yeah. can't do it. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I, can't. No. I can't. I can't. I can't. I cannot be in the same household as somebody that likes that movie. John, <laughs> John, John, John Voight should want to know. <laughs> I love that movie. First of all, Paul. <laughs> all right, um, I, are you, that, are you done with the National Treasure? National, is, national Treasure is a National Treasure. Yeah. yeah okay. Just like Nicholas yourself. the Cage Cage. <laughs> Nicholas the Cage I, Cage. I do have one other thing as well. Uh, we got a gift from a friend of the show, Neil. Uh, he also took took part of it. As a one year, you know, we've we've done the show for a year now, so he, we, he knows we like to play Magic periodically. So he bought a pack of the Unstable 
<gasps> Magic. Oh. oh! We each get seven. Oh my seven god! Seven booster packs to open up. Oh my uh, god! These yeah. have it, already been opened. Yeah, it's what's called a repack. Yeah, a repack. Neil, so awesome. He did get us this as a hey. We've been doing this for a year. I know he's coming on later on for some of the other ep- yeah. for some of the other books and things. Oh, how so cool! He he got us this, and I just what had to fella. say. Thank you. That is so, awesome. The repack is, of the unstable. We each are, get seven. Are we supposed each. to do an opening on on? I think I, that would make terrible. I, that would be yeah, the that worst. Would be, that would be absolutely. Hey, I got a card. Podcast. You guys see this card? It's a card. <laughs> it's a card, everybody. So is this what, a card? I, what I have here is a card that has a green creature on it. it, it <laughs> But that, we, that would be almost it. Seven. I will. I'm doling them up right now. That, so thank you, Neil. That would be almost as yeah. bad as if we were actually performing magic. <laughs> yes. yes. On the pod. <laughs> on the podcast. Magic on the radio. Okay. Hey. One of our listeners choose a card. <laughs> I'm gonna say you chose this one. Okay. <laughs> that, this is the one you chose. Uh, uh, right now, I'm shuffling it around a whole bunch. Oh, it's <laughs> it's it's hovering above my head. Look at it. Look like, at it go. Like, like remember when the magicians would do the the trick on the TV screen? You know, choose a card, put your yeah. finger. On it and mm. all that kind of stuff. Mm. Paul, where did you pull that rabbit from? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. I That's learned a awesome. lot of things in the Burger King bathroom. <laughs> 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 So yes, so thank you, Neil. Yes, yes thank, you, thank Neil. you, Neil. That's awesome. Okay, uh, member of the show, not friend of the show. Yeah, uh, yeah, a member of the show, friend yes. of the show. I didn't, I didn't remember yeah. what you guys. Yeah. Fellow them. fourth chair. Yeah, fellow fourth fellow chair. Fourth chair. Also gonna, known as red oh, shirt. We also, uh, yes. which, which we you are have, wearing right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> of course, we do have some fo- uh, some cards here, some tokens that are foiled. I'll talk about those later. Um, guys, when I wouldn't be I wouldn't I wouldn't be opening them right now. We don't have sleeves right now. We don't no, have they're, sleeves. They're yeah. tokens. It doesn't Tur- matter. Tournament starting soon. You boys might want to sleeve up. <laughs> um, Guess who's staying up all night playing magic? Okay. Okay. Wait. 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 Can we derail? And can you please tell this story? Because okay. I think this is a great okay. story. Um. So kind of, I, I would say playing Magic: The Gathering was how Bob and I kind of. Initially became friends. I, I'd never. We solidified, it. solidified our friendship our together. Friendship, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Over but anyway, Bob Magic got, the Gathering. Bob got me into it. I was pretty heavy into it for a couple of years at least. Yes. Um, and uh, myself, Neil, member of the show, and uh, my another uh, friend of ours uh, went actually to a tournament. A right. I don't remember what you call those. It was like a draw. Don't you guys? It wasn't uh, a pre-release. Draw? A pre-release so, party. so for a, a while, party. we we all descended into the depths oh, of is. madness that is Magic: The Gathering. Yep. If you want to have high level decks and you're buying booster yes. boxes galore and trying to get mythics, it. It, trading stuff, tra- trading stuff on like Craigslist with some dude in a fedora <laughs> in a parking lot. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's like you lose your mind. You eat, sleep, and breathe magic together. It's a drug. You need to eventually get uh, off of. So mm. now we're all just back to casual and like yeah, very, yes, casual. Yes. very and, casual. Very casual. I would say you know we. It's like, it's like we we we're not taking the heroin anymore. <laughs> exactly. But, but, but we will take a snort of cocaine yeah, yeah. every once. Yeah. Occasionally <laughs> we go to the depository, also known as Walmart, my buy a pack. <laughs> but then we call each other for support. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get uh, support, man. And this. We're good. So what had happened, and you know, you say we, we went down the, the rabbit hole, but you know, we realistically we didn't go that far. And no, this, and the no. story is just kind of what deeper. what yeah. uh, demonstrates that we we had gone to the pre-release uh, tournament or pre-release game playing. I don't, we went to a, we went to a game store for the pre-release of one of the the cons of Tarkir. Yes, you, uh, yes, set. yes. Um, you went into a musty, smelly, body odor no, hole. Ni- it was a very nice. No, that's this filled that's- with neckbeards. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So um, anyway, what what had happened? We all got our cars. We all made our decks up. We all kind of flipped through them a little bit. We're like, okay, th- these work. These works. So we're just sitting there, kind of chatting with each other. And this one guy comes by, and he's like, "Well, boys, you better uh, sleeve up. We're starting soon." And we. Just- <laughs> <laughs> we looked at him, we're like, oh, we don't have sleeves. And he just kind of like looks at us with just the most disappointment I've ever seen on anybody's face. And he, and he just says, oh, okay. <laughs> and he walks away. I'm like, oh, you're not going to sleeve up? Yeah. Okay. And, no, that's okay. Leave your baby in the hot car. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we might as well have. Left a baby in a hot car. I don't know. So that, I think we should just bring this in uh, always, you know, if we, if we ever say, uh, you want to sleeve up? Yeah, that's, what, that's what we're talking we're starting about. starting soon. You better sleeve up. <laughs> that, that is what we're in reference to. Yes. Uh, excuse, yeah. excuse me, I'm here for the gangbang. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better sleeve up. <laughs> My this is not what I thought Two-Headed uh, Dragon was going to be. <laughs> hey-o. Hey-o. <laughs> so, 
So, uh, hey, but we've got we've got lots feedback. of feedback. We've got lots of yeah, feedback. Uh, I have been eating, breathing, sleeping, drinking Dragonlance, uh, reading comic book issues uh, like crazy. So I want to stump for that first. Uh, if you guys are listening to this podcast, I'm assuming. We are in the review of War of the Twins. You must be a Dragonlance fan. Well, back in the late 80s, uh, DC did a run of the comics. Come over to our Facebook page because we're in the middle of a marathon. Uh, I'm reading uh, all 34 original DC issues. Uh, I'm posting a one review every single day uh, of my thoughts, but I want to hear what you guys have to think about it. We've gotten some great responses, some good conversation, had a lot of fun with some of the ads and everything that are in there, listening listening to some Smooth Up In Me by the oh, Bullet yeah, Boys. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun. So, I mean, daily stuff is going on on our Facebook page. If you want to continue your Dragonlance conversation, come over there, break out those old comic books out of, uh, I mean, if you're still using polypropylene, I don't know what's wrong with you. You need to get some Mylar. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, break break those uh, comics out of their uh, polypropylene sarcophagi. I, I, I edited an SQL database today and that is the nerdiest thing I have ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> um, just so you know, uh, polypropylene uh, is unstable and will break down in time and ruin your comic books, so you need to get it into Mylar. I have, <laughs> Leave I have that. learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway, well, that's uh, taking up brain space for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, uh, we <laughs> just keep drinking that. The we'll font of unnecessary knowledge. Um, but anyway, so come on over. We're looking for a lot of people to comment on things. But we've had a lot of comments on just also the the books that we're reviewing. The books. Uh, we got a couple of messages. Uh, you better sleeve up. Better sleeve up because we're going in deep. <laughs> so here we go uh, on our Facebook page. Andrew says oh part gosh. two of Legends. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. No, it's funny. It's funny. Okay. All right. So Andrew uh, on Facebook says, The part two of Legends was very well done, guys. Pit it. Uh, the discussion was well thought out and deep enough. That's what she said. hey -o. So you might want to check with the more fanatical Dragonlance nerds, but let's talk Taz and going back um, in time. Actually, a bit of feedback from another listener. Yes. Tass. Because his name is Tasselhoff, not Tasselhoff. I like Taz. So it should be I'm Tass. Kidding, Taz. I feel like it's a well, hand you've, you've really never been one for just pronouncing things correctly. <laughs> I have never pronounced names correctly. It's just names. what I, I go should with. Say names. I should names, say names. Names, I just kind of go with, I'm just going to stick with whatever popped into my head. We're just going to be loosey goosey, flim flammy about these names. <laughs> I won't. Wiggly, wiggly, I'm wiggly not. time you want. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to start taking the T off of Tannis. Yeah. And just call him Tannis. No, that's anal ginseng. It goes in your mouth. <laughs> wow! You know what? Okay, I, Hi, I, kids. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta talk about, oh, I gotta talk yes. about the old Tannis here for a second okay. because okay. I have not liked this character uh, since the last review, and now coming back, it's like he's his own tulpa. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's created his own essence that Just like keeps coming back. Yeah, because I think in everybody's mind, you should know what Tannis should be like, and I thought the books kind of disservice him, made him kind of whiny and everything else. And now he's coming back into the comic books. Uh, as of recording, mm -hmm. they're not posted yet, but by the time this goes out, they will be. The arena of Istar stuff. Man, Tannis shows up whining and bitching about everything. Really? I, could, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, here comes Tannis again. Uh, <laughs> even even when comic book writers do him, he still becomes, ah, oh, I can't take well, it. I mean, you know, if, he, if he was written that way enough, you know, that's just uh, then, then that becomes his character. Yeah. But, I, oh, man, I don't know. Uh, and I feel like I'm like this old 40-year-old dad uh, who well, Tannis shows up to date my daughter. I'm like, first of all, hippie, take the feathers out of your hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, and, that, and that hair is going to be coming off here soon. I hope. I, I, I hope that there is actually somebody out there named Tannis. And, you're, <laughs> and one of your daughters at least dates him for like a little bit. <laughs> You'd never believe my daughter is dating this guy named Tannis. Oh, you would not be that calm about and he it. Comes you would yeah, be yeah. screaming yeah. at the top of your head. What is the yeah. world? <laughs> this is a Tulpa. Yeah, that's it. it. The that's more we it. talk. That's it. You're never leaving the compound again. Yeah, yeah. You, you know the the 18 year olds I'm talking about that come through the door and and yet they're complaining about body ailments. 
It's oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. they're, like, they're Oh, my 55. back hurts so much. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're 18, yeah, shut yeah, up. Yeah, it's called a growing pain. Shut up. Uh, everything's regenerating. <laughs> so, so well, anyway, anyways, what Andrew, Andrew, what Andrew, Andrew has Facebook. to Facebook. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit. He says, so you might want to check with the more fanatical Dragonlance nerds, but let's talk Taz and going back in time. So the Grey Gem races. The Grey Gem was something out of pure chaos. Literally. Ooh. I think the reason the Grey Gem races shouldn't time travel is because they add chaos to the order. Now maybe there is a chance to subvert the flow of time a little more. Less a pebble and more a boulder. I would definitely read some stuff about the gem. Also, Danubis was originally in Crisania's place, and Faragas was in Caramon's place. I could go on, but hey, spoilers. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we took a little bit, I wouldn't say a deep dive into Grey Gem races. No, not a, not a deep dive. We took, we took a quick a quick scan. Yeah. Over. A little scan, yeah. So there is obviously Reams. A low-speed troll. <laughs> a low-speed speed surface troll, mm. which we just barely dipped our tiny worm-like hooks down in. They got nibbled on, and we very quickly brought them back up. <laughs> I was supposed to bring it back up. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh man! But anyway, uh, the the basics of this. I mean, okay, we are gonna we are not Dragonlance experts, no. so we are going to get all of this wrong. So yes. please, yes. you know, whatever we're Correct taking, it, we're we're, all. we're skimming all of this. Okay, mm -hmm. but there was this god called Heidekel, um, uh, and Heimdall. Yep, Heimdall. <laughs> yep. <laughs> No, that's what I do. I just right. make up names for the people. Right. That, that's my that's my stick. Yeah. Hi Hi okay, go on about Hyman. So, I don't know, so, <laughs> so Hyman has is is just chaotic. He breeds chaos. No, oh. not really. Um, but Reorks gave to his smiths, and I'm reading from the Dragonlance Nexus. Thank God this place exists. Okay, mm. but Reorks gave to his smiths a vision of the great machine that would only be powered with the Gray Gem and then gave a vision to Milgas Kadwar, where the Grey Gem could be found. Milgas, okay, I love Dragonlance, um, and this is just some of the great, greatest mythology ever. Listen to this. <laughs> Milgas used a skyhook ladder to reach Lunatari by hooking onto the ether, climbing, then hooking onto the ether again, before finally reaching the moon. Milgas... <laughs> You know what, actually, Bob, Bob, Bob you, know what I've, you know what I found is actually that if you Google Grey Gem races, uh, there was a horse named Grey Gem, and you can find their race records. <laughs> <laughs> How did Grey Gem do? In the Equibase. <laughs> it's your official source for horse racing. <laughs> so, okay, so the guy wait, the guy finds a rock on the moon. So okay? yeah, yeah, basically, he, he uses his weird hook and ladder system to climb all the way to the moon, regardless of no air. Uh, Milgus then uses a magical net given to him by Heidekel to hook the Grey Gem, and he began to descend back to current... Kryn, uh, once on the ground, Reorix arrived to claim the Grey Gem, but the Grey Gem awoke and escaped from the net. It trailed a web of chaotic, wild magic in its wake, and it warped people, landscapes, and anything that was in its path. And so yeah, magic so, finally so, returned to Kryn. So basically, some some dude put a rock on the moon, and then it escaped, rolled around Kryn, and made stuff crazy. Yeah, it bounced into people. Yeah, and and what we are told, I mean, this is I mean, this is gospel truth, like here. Uh, I mean, stubborn orgs became minotaurs, and doughty smiths became dwarves, and kind of scatterbrained smiths became gnomes. And other smiths became some, there must have been a lot of smiths. And, yeah. And, <laughs> well, if you look in the phone you book, don't there want, is a lot you, of smiths. Yeah, you are. don't want to know what happened to the Andersons. <laughs> <laughs> and the Johnsons. <laughs> what? <Woo! laughs> the the stone swelled them up like I mean uh, I don't know, I don't understand. And the sea elves and all this. So I guess so. A rock a rock fell, a rock came down from the moon. So basically, you races. have you have the original races, and you have these things called gray gem races, which were created by a rolling rock. You know, a lot of races, a lot of kids have been created by rolling rock. Yes, by the way, have. <laughs> a couple of them. a couple of them at least. Yeah. Fancy pants people in bars cracking open a rolling rock. Uh, but any anyway, in nineteen ninety three, because that's when rolling rock was fancy. <laughs> This is true. That is true. Uh, but you have all these uh, races that are called the Grey Gem, and they supposedly are more born of chaos, and so 
if you have Tasselhoff, who is a chaotic of the chaotic races, uh, that's why he couldn't go back in time because it would add chaos. So to exactly what Andrew said. Yes. Exactly what he yes. said. We just need. We're just talking it out for our own purposes. Because yeah. we don't understand this for anything. <laughs> Basically, any of those races have a chance to be a bigger rock in the stream of time than just a pebble. Yeah, yeah. yeah They're a chaotic true. boulder child. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hey, watch your own bobber. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. A uh, quick bit of feedback from Twitter. Um, Sage Murray OV uh, said, Ah, do the Wheel of Time books. Because I think we thought we might have brought that, I, brought that up. I agree. But you know what? Okay, at least maybe the first wheel of time because I think that one's pretty short. It's like only eight hundred pages. Yeah, we, we are. We are this, <laughs> this podcast is on a bit of a time crunch, but you know what? It's it's cool. Um, I think we'll get there eventually. We definitely I think so. are there's only there so many. So, well, yeah. Actually, I shouldn't say there's only so many books. That is false. Yeah. Also, yeah. Lolf followed us, and I'm kind of scared. Um, the spider uh, queen of or spider goddess of the drow. Yeah. Oh, okay. She, she's probably going to, like, kill From us Forgotten and, Realms. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Oh, Ooh. foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. <laughs> okay. Mm. Um, you know, that that's <laughs> pretty much it. Which, by the way, um, our reading calendar should be updated, I would say, within maybe a week or so. We're going to talk out. We're, we're having a lot of discussion on what should go on for yes, next year. Lots, yeah. lots, because we're not sure where to go. Uh, uh, I mean, we, we had a plan. And um, the popularity of Dragonlance uh, has meant that we want to keep uh, Dragonlance trilogies in the in the rotation for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. And so it's thrown other things into chaos as to where we're going. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're still in the in the negotiations of what we're going to read so next. Honestly, week. if you guys yeah. want us to stick on to stick on Dragonlance, let us know. Yeah. You know? And Forgotten Realms is definitely speaking, being toyed. Speaking speaking of. Well, actually, oh, uh, real quick, uh, I'm just kind of going through here. I had put this on Facebook, um, so if you're not on Facebook, just something Margaret Weiss had tweeted out three days after we had released our last episode. Uh, Gen Con was going on. Um, yes. Day one of Gen Con went great. Uh, so much fun having Joe Man Man that guy. Mangiali. <laughs> uh, that one. Lemon cello. Lemon um, <laughs> Uh, I can Mozzarella tutti frutti. Um, Joe, the the, the gray the gray guy from Magic Mike. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she was in the booth with him um, today. Larry Elmore and her have a panel at one p.m. Blah 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 to talk all things Dragonlance in parentheses. Well, the things we can talk about. Smiley face. Um, uh -huh. ooh. Yeah. So that, that was a little exciting. Our friends over at PB Publishing had added us on that just to make sure that we saw it. Yes. Um, so we did also get a comment um, on a post time. from back in July 24th of 2017. Um, you know, just somebody expressing that he, he had found our podcast, thought it was cool. Hey, a Dragonlance podcast. And then kind of expressed how disappointed he was with our views on... Mm. the book and you know I, I had commented back um, and I just I do I do want to just air this out for people who aren't looking to go all the way back to a post just like I just did <laughs> you know I did a little bit of tap dancing there um, but we are not a Dragonlance podcast don't let the Dungeons and Dweebs title fool you yeah. actually this has nothing to do with Dungeons and Dragons yeah we're just a book review podcast that happened to start with Dragonlance, and yeah. we do enjoy Kryn and the world and the people we've met through these books. Right. But first and foremost, we are not a Dragonlance yeah. podcast. Right, right. So there is a really uh, cool podcast out there uh, about that. That is Dragonlance centric, uh, and and so if you look them up, uh, you know, check them out there. They're, they're really good. It's called the Dragonlance Canticle. Mm. Um, and they are the guys who are, like, steeped in lore uh, and know everything about mm. it. Um, they, are, they are essentially almost real-world... Uh, oh, God, what's the dude's name? Anasis? Astonis. yes. yes. If, there were three, if there were three Astonises in a room... Astonai. <laughs> Astonai. Those guys would be your source. So, no, yeah, what you said, Luke, is right on. Um, we love the world, uh, and, and we've had our problems with the books and our loves of the books, and we consider ourselves fans. But when we started the podcast, it was like, hey... 
We're going to give our honest reviews. We're here to have fun. Uh, we do like to send up stuff and just yeah. really make fun of stuff and over-exaggerate yeah. stuff as well for, like, humor. So when you come to the table, uh, we don't want to offend anybody. We just want to have a lot of fun. And sometimes, just like anything, you'll see, hey, my biggest love is Star Wars. We are moving on to the Timothy Zahn trilogy, a trilogy that I hold as my holy grail from childhood. We'll be making fun of that series too. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's not making you know, and or not really making fun, but we're just making light, right? Well, yeah. exactly, and that's one of the things that, as a, a a critical podcast, as a podcast that is reading books and dissecting them as much as we are, that's something we do. That's right in our title. We're right. a book, like Luke said, we are a book review podcast. Right. And if we're going to maintain internal consistency, and we haven't gone far yet, so that's why I'll keep going to you know, Brown, Pierce Brown. Mm. But if you look at, like, uh, novels like Pierce Brown's, who are going to have their lovers and detractors, those books, but his his plotting was super tight mm. without a lot of plot holes. Um, Dragonlance, not tight, you know? So if we're going to maintain internal consistency, we have to point out all of these flaws, you know, so that you, you have some sort of, you know, basis to go mm-hmm. on. Like, hey, you know, Dragonlance was awesome, but a little weak in the writing area. Mm-hmm. Hey, but now we're doing Pierce Brown, super tight in the writing area. You know, yeah, you, ha- you, you have to be able to compare apples to apples. Yeah, because we might be critical, but we do still love it. And yeah. that's, like, that's the big thing is, yeah. I know, Bob, you've talked about it, and you've been critical on uh, on this a lot, where yeah. it's, you've had your moments, and but you're, you still go, I'm so happy we're back here. Mm-hmm. Right, this right. is so yeah. nice. Oh, this yeah. is so much fun. Oh, yeah. To do this. And I'm reading all these. Uh, uh, to, I constantly am reading this junk on my own time. I wouldn't do this if I wasn't a fan. Yeah. yeah. But I can, I, can, I, I can also recognize when things aren't working. Yes. Yeah. So. And speaking of fans, we do have one more thing that I want to bring up from oh, Facebook. Yeah. Um, we have Jason off of Facebook who sent us a picture of some fan art that he did actually sent to TSR. I love And this TSR thing. actually wrote him a personal letter back. Uh, I in love 1988, and he still has this letter from 1988. Was, he was like 16. Yeah. 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 Super cool. It is really cool. So go ahead and jump on our... That is connected to our it Facebook It will be on post. our Facebook. Yeah. Uh, he slid it into our DMs. Oh, he slid it into our... Okay. <laughs> That's not, that is just a thing that people say. I, <laughs> yes, I understand. I'm an elder millennial. <laughs> Listen well, to me. Uh, Jason, we're actually going to pop some, some of your stuff up on Facebook. Um, just kind of a history thing, too, because it is actually... It a, is a nice piece of It's history. actually a typed letter. Yeah, it's yeah. got the TSR letterhead on it and everything. Yes, like, I mean, like, actually from a typewriter, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's Old that, Margaret but I thought was, that was, was crouched cool. over her typewriter. Old typewriter. March. <laughs> Oh, hey Margaret, type out another letter. We got a piece oh, fun, of banner. Fun, fun little thing. Um, she she needed she she tweeted out she needed help with her MacBook. <laughs> so like I actually tried to help her, um, but she had I don't know I I just seen the tweet too late. But like I'm like um you know generally like outside of work I don't want to troubleshoot stuff. I'm like you know yeah. what for Margaret Weiss I, yeah, I, 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 I can do this. this. You'll make an awesome. exception. That's awesome. All right. So that being said, let's actually get into this sucker. Let's All actually right. go forward. I'm gonna jump into. Volume book one of volume two, The War of the Twins. We yes. we will, but hold on, I gotta pull this up underneath here. We have a voicemail on our voicemail box. What? Yeah. That's right. Oh hey, we've got a new voicemail. Yeah, um, you know, and it's got a little tiny little tape in it, and you know, we all sat down, recorded a little family uh message where we say stuff at the same time. I don't Kind of like the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the podcast. Did yeah. you guys do that when you were younger? Did you uh, sit down? Did your parents make you record no, uh, for the... Not at all. No. No? It was just one person. Just no? I, I did it. Yeah, I did it. yeah. yeah. Me, me and my sister had to do it. You had to do the, uh, the George Costanza where he... Does his answering machine to the theme from Greatest American Hero? Oh, it wasn't quite that. No, it was, like, it, was like, it was like me saying, like, hey, you've reached whoever the heck. And then my sister saying, yeah, we're not home right now. And then together we said, leave a message. <laughs> and, like, we had to practice. I don't know. Maybe is this why, like, I'm on a podcast now? Thanks, Mom. Actually, yeah. thank, thank you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I guess, how are we going to, uh, I mean, I'll definitely insert it post in post into the show so it sounds better. But yeah. um, do you Wait, have a, can you hit play right there so we can? Hey, Dungeons and Dweebs boys. This is Sage Murray from the Occulte Veritatis podcast. Just wanted to uh, send you my love and, and tell you how much I love your podcast and appreciate all you do. Um, it was, this is a pretty cool idea and 
We also have a uh, voicemail app on our website, www.ovpod.ca. Uh, keep on rocking on, and I'm super stoked that you are doing uh, Dragon Lance again. Bye. Keep on rocking on. Oh, uh, yeah. S- Sage Murray. <laughs> Sage Murray sneaking into the podcast twice. I see what you're doing. Hi, yes. Sage. <laughs> um, and actually, yeah, we did see that you had that on your website. We, I think we were actually going to steal or steal that idea for using that software because I don't know what sort of tomfoolery we have going on. <laughs> yeah. Until uh, that happens, uh, well, you... You have been diving deep into that podcast, I guess, before we I have. Pretty I good. have. Uh, yeah, and she, you know what she said, uh, the Occulte Veritatis podcast. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan. I, yeah. I, I can't express enough how big of a fan of this podcast. And, and, you, and you, you, you got scared? I got scared. Oh, oh, you yeah. got a little oh, scared. Yeah, yeah, this, this, this is a really good story. Luke, Luke got scared again? Got this, scared. Is two, this is two podcasts in a row now where something weird has happened to you. Oh, Oh, <coughs> you, yes. Have you? I have not, but I will. Or told them? I will. Okay. Um, I have not heard this story yet, so this is new to me. Um, so the. <laughs> he's he's so scared right now. He's speechless, folks. So scared right now. The ep- the I, episode I, I, I'm on so scared, right? exorcism. Yes. I'm startled. I was going to try that. I'm yeah. so startled I'm right so now. Startled. Oh, talk the episode number. The the OV podcast has an episode um, about uh, an exorcism exorcism of a journal. The OV podcast has an episode about the exorcism of a German girl. Oh my! Um, and it just it just happened to be I was on my way back. We we live in rural Minnesota, so I'm <laughs> driving back on these like back highway roads, and it's dark, and they're playing these tapes of this exorcism, <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm actually kind of scared right now <laughs> by myself out in the woods. I don't know. That's just a I yeah. Um, I said it last time to check them out. I'm gonna say it again to check them out. Um, awesome. If you're looking for a good spook, yes, uh, they're not, not not all their stuff is scary, but that that one was pretty creepy. Uh, exorcisms have always creeped me out, though. Yeah, yeah, um, pretty good. They're 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 a very good podcast, so high, mm-hmm. highly recommend. But if you want to get a hold of us, uh, we would love to hear uh, from you guys. So as of right now, until maybe tech changes, yeah, uh, we've got kind of a, a number going right now. I'll kind of keep. Occasionally reposting it to our Facebook, it's down in the feed aways. But it would be a phone number one two one eight four eight one eight five eight one. So that number again is one two one eight four eight one eight five eight one. Although yes. this is a podcast, you could just rewind. Yeah, you it. could just rewind. It. There's actually really a very a very handy yeah. little fifteen second fifteen second to jump back. Yeah. <laughs> um, we uh, hey, you know what I said on Twitter. Hey, if you want to pretend like it's nineteen ninety five again and leave us a message, you can now. Yeah, um, but hey, is that is it time to grab more drinks and actually talk about the book? Let's Please. actually talk about this yeah. book. Let's okay, I got this one again. It's Dragonlance. I'm feeling giddy. Let's no get into it. Yes. All right, we need another round, and I'd like some shots. Please. No, not not a real fireball. Ooh, <laughs> tell me more. It's a, it's a DeLorean, isn't it? Scales are always in my favor. I might have driven a DeLorean here. Hi, pull up a chair, friend. So here we are, <clears throat> War of the Twins. Hmm. Mario Weiss, Tracy Hickman. 1980 something. Uh, 86. What, 86. Are we 86 or 87? Na- 1986. Originally, 1986. Second edition was June 2004. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, Wizards. Now that's a, that's a first edition book you have in front of you, right? I know this is the annotated. The annotated. I, I think the first edition annotated. Do you have the first edition book of this? A paperback. Oh, okay. so came paperback. Why are uh-huh. we Why are we talking like we're on NPR? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> And actually, highbrow literature. Yes, yes. and President Trump said, "I don't know, I got nothing." Uh, (laughs) So it's a War of the Twins, the Dragonlance Legends trilogy, Volume Two. We're here to discuss Book One, but first, Bob. Yeah. Where that synopsis at, son? (laughs) Well, you know, keeping in time here with the Caramon is, uh, you know. Watching the Duke boys at night on his telly. Hey, you know what? Only thing harder harder than keeping up with the time-traveling caramel is uh, making sure my wife's fed. (laughs) Hey, doggy. What? I just traveled back in time. Uh And now I'm back from back in time, but not right to my time. I'm to a time slightly before the time that I went back in time from my trailer in the trees. From... 
And how are the Majera Boys going to get themselves out of this fix? How <laughs> are the Majera Boys going to get themselves out of I'm, this one? I'm, yeah. the dude, I'm the dude playing the dude pretending to be another dude. <laughs> so do you have a synopsis, Bob? I've got a syn- another synopsis. We decided to do this one in song once again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As, I got part, as part of the playlist, the playlist for Summer I, of Lands 2 I, Electric Boogaloo. I upgraded. It's on a cassette this time. Um, oh, yes. I don't have a cassette. And, and we, brought, we brought in a big hitter right now. <laughs> hey, hang on, hang on. I got to use the, I got to use this pencil and put the tape back in the cassette quick. Oh, did it? Oh, it unraveled uh, again. It always happen. <sighs> make, sure, uh, make sure you put it on the right side. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Uh, just so you know, we got in a big hitter to sing this one. Hank Williams Jr. Hank Williams Jr.? No, yeah. no, no, man. Caramel the Younger. <laughs> <laughs> the King Priest brought on the edge of time And the blood sea of this star is turning wide And darkness all around I can't see much more I'm going down well, I lived up in the trees You see Tinker and that gully dwarf Rapping me I was a fear good at do nothing Barely alive But a soulless boy can survive so this boy can't survive. The high glare's power is portal dry So my brother went to Gillian to ask him why The fortress of the dwarves is where it all goes down The hammer of Karis didn't help those clowns They say the death of my brother will come in time But a soldier's boy can survive A soldier's boy can survive The dragons can't burn us out They just don't make us run If my sword's in my hand I'll get the job done Slashing good, punching ram If your head's in my hand He's a master of time And the dark queen better not sleep tonight For to Jesus will fall And racing will rise And a soulless boy can survive A soulless boy can survive Grayson is a man of unscrupulous means Made a deal with the doer to betray the king The crown ran red and the fortress fell The gates came down with a mighty end The fortress of Zalman is the final goal Across the plains of Deergat the army must go A band of dwarves are in the camp in the middle of the night The hands of dark assassins, my brother lost his life Ah, but death won't stop, I'm gonna keep up the fight And take it to the keys for the cause of right Cause a soulless boy can survive A soulless boy can survive Time in the dark queen better not sleep tonight. For Tequisas will fall and race will rise, and a soulless boy can survive. 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 Uh, That's the one Hank, yeah, yeah. 
A Diddy. A Diddy. <laughs> I don't know. You got no, yeah, that's what, no, something like that. So I Yee-haw! Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Well, that got me all fired up to talk about this first book. War of the Twins. Well, you know what there, son? Why don't we get right into it then? Let's go, let's go Bobby Ray. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to start here with book one. The River Flows On. I actually dug this. Okay, yeah. For 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 this short little little synopsis, or not a synopsis, but this short little um, idea here that's at the very, very beginning of the book, The River Flows On, I was kind of wondering, where, okay, where are we going to go with this? But it's nice, it's tight, it gives us a little bit of easing us into book two, I and agree. it's not too much. Right? Actually, I'm, I'm just going to read you verbatim my notes. Okay, that was P-dope. <laughs> that's all I wrote. Yeah, no. Uh, no, I really like this. I'll, I guess you could call it a preface. Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I really I like it. I go with preface. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Prologue. Tr- Tracy says he always likes uh, time travel stuff, especially from H.G. Wells, which, hey, uh, we reviewed some H.G. Uh, Wells. Yeah, if you uh, go back in our podcast feed, uh, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. Um, which, by the way, probably one of our least downloaded episodes. So, what, you guys don't like old school sci-fi? Get yeah. schooled, people! <laughs> the, what does the saddle look like? <laughs> <laughs> that is the key question of that entire podcast. What did the time machine yeah. saddle? No, I mean, the time machine by H.G. Wells forms the basis of all time travel in the modern world. It is referenced continuously. If you don't know H.G. Wells, you don't know time travel. Get learned. Son. Get learned, people. So I'm just going to read the last paragraph. Mm. For those who survived the immediate destruction on Anzalon, death came slowly. In hideous aspect. Starvation, disease, murder... War. And war never changes. So are they war. hammering it home that they're calling it War of the Twins with this little war at the no. end? Because of that? No. <laughs> so, no, so, no. So, okay, no. Actually, I don't even know. I just Because you know what I did at the end there, War, War Never Changes. That's an, yeah. at the beginning of Fallout, Fallout. video every, games. Every Fallout so that, that's, video that's just where my brain was. Right. I wasn't even thinking about it. Like, oh, Fallout, yeah. I don't play that so game. So you're right. saying there's going to be a war. <laughs> so no. it's going to be war. It's no. actually a police in action. <laughs> Sex, just police in action. We're just over here. Um, but anyway, so so we start in chapter one. We should back up just slightly. Yes, so yes, where yes. did we leave our characters at the end of the last book? Right. Uh, it's Tassel- a bit of a cl- cliffhanger. Tasselhoff has the world falling around him, and he's in his little protective spell bubble watching the cataclysm. Yeah, yep. going, oh boy, I'm dead. Okay, there's going to be issues coming up there with that old spell bubble because you saw it. I think... I read it that in some ways Tasseloff was protected uh, mm-hmm. when the, when the meteorite was coming down. Um, we're gonna find out in this Tasseloff is dead. He bit it. Mm-hmm. No. Yes. Yeah, no. He, yes, he did. He basically bit it. I don't think he's he didn't like die. He got transported to where dead people. Yeah. Are. No. That that was the whole thing when he yeah. was in the abyss was that he's not dead. Yeah. He's dead, but he's not. But he, yeah. He, he you're not dead yet. Yeah, yeah. He, he is, going to he is dying yes. while he is. Yeah. He is going on Tasselhoff's bogus journey. <laughs> <laughs> Tassel, who, who's the other guy? N- N- Narif or who? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Tasselhoff and Narif's totally bogus abyss journey. <laughs> <laughs> totally bogus journey to the abyss. <laughs> So yeah. So anyway, so uh, but but Caramon, but, yes, but. right? There's more, right? Caramon but wait, and Chris, uh, there's more. Chrisania and Raceland, they were all able to. Uh, if you get throw out of one there. fiery mountain at Istar right now, we'll throw in a second one for free. <laughs> hey. <That's laughs> not, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, Caramon, Raceland, Chrisania. Um, Chris. We'll just call her Chris. Oh, Chris. 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 Um. Yeah. Uh, or is it Chris? Chris. <laughs> Chris? Uh, Chris? Pass. So Chris Pass. had blinded, or put him to sleep and blinded, or at least just blinded. Blinded, right. blinded yep. Caramon. Caramon. Yep. Uh, because he was going to kill Raceland. Raceland then cast a spell, mm-hmm. and... Bam! Bam! <laughs> nice. Yeah. Good timing. Yeah. yeah. So chapter one, we open with Chrysania awakening in the pitch black. She uses the medallion to light the darkness and sees Caramon standing over the crumpled body of Raceland. Oh. Yeah, you know, you know, Why in, is he going to kill him? In this chapter, until it's actually revealed in the book, I thought they were still... That they had just leapt forward in time, right? Yes. but not in location. I agree. I, yeah, I, I agree. So too. Right. And, that, and that, the creepy, it kept referencing the desk. 
The, yeah, the, and I yeah, thought it was yes. the desk the in, desk. in, in and, the and temple. And a, and a that he was working floor. his magic yes. on. Yeah. 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 And, the, and there, there's something creepy crawly rustling around. Like, is that like an insane right. Tasselhoff that's yeah. been here for a hundred years? Yeah. Oh, 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 Or any of the like 85 little half half alive creatures that were in cages in the bubble. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Th- that's, those are actually all great ideas. But I love this opening chapter. But instead. <laughs> instead. I thought this was done very well. I thought there was a lot, you know, a lot of things were veiled. It kept the interest up. I really, I'm just I just really having a good like f- it. <laughs> um, yeah, I yeah. thought they were on Istar. Um, they're raced race lens, but instead they're actually in the Tower of High Sorcery in Palantos, yes. right? Yes. At Palantos, yeah. Uh, race lens unconscious. Caramon is blind. Um, we're told actually right off the bat, which is something they could have teased out for a while, but decided not to. That. This is we like you said we've arrived in the tower, but before the time that Raceland had taken the tower over. Yes. Yeah, he's he hasn't right. taken it over, and later on they talk about it where they like the little protectors, the minions are sitting there going, "He's not powerful. He's yeah. weak right mm-hmm. now. He's what is this? We're all or, confused." And, and, yeah, all, well, and in the end, don't they have to? They have to, he has to fool them by saying yeah. he's Fist and Dantilus. Well, well yeah, I, I, yeah, would yeah, say, yeah, I would yeah. save that conversation uh, for later. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they're surrounded, like you said, by these creatures. Um, I don't know, Karamon says that he, they'll think he's racing his fist and Dantalus and back off from the first chapter. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't matter. Karamon's attacked by the creatures, kind of, briefly. So Raceland, though, stops everything, the attack on Karamon and everything with a, with a handy... Shrek! <laughs> Thanks, Keeper Sutherland. I, I just love it. <laughs> that will, we will always remember Living that. Living infamy. Um, so, Raisin and Chrysania, there's a lot of holding each other that mm-hmm. happens in this Oh, one. yeah. It's, gonna, yeah. it's actually, like, a little kind of kind of sexy. Yeah, well, yeah, there's, yeah. The, I, the I, tension. I, what, you know, and I maybe slightly suppressed or repressed uh, mm-hmm. the stuff from the first book where I've always found this relationship a little off-putting and uncomfortable, which I'm not docking the book for. I, I think that's good. I think, no, it I, I, I I think, think it's supposed brilliant. to be. Yeah. It's supposed to be. Weird. Yes, exactly. I think that's because a good like, thing. He, he totes wants to get up in that, but he can't. <laughs> He Smooth needs. opinion. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> but that might be our next song. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I, I. But coming into it, the second book, uh, I'm getting desensitized to it. I'm more comfortable to their relationship. I mean, but I guess I don't. You know, I, I'm actually I'm I'm doing better, and I think it's because they're in a situation that I like. It's not some weird time. Right. Well, well, stuff is happening. Yeah, they're not just yeah, sitting in a room yeah. staring at right, each other, right, right. sweating. But yeah, yeah but, and, but, but and, <laughs> and actually, they are just yeah. sitting in a room. But right. I mean, like, but they're, they're cold this time. They're, they're not light, sweating. Yeah, their yeah. lives are kind of in danger. Right. The, the, this room is described very well to me. Right. You know, and it really it, bridges into chapter two. All of these kind of run together. And we've always said Weiss and Hickman do ghosts. And they do. Yeah, creepy. they do yeah, they dark do well. Dark. Yes. They do well. dark well. well. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag Absolutely. bring back dark and wood. When things are not illuminated by the light of reason, <laughs> <laughs> things go very well um, for for this team. But yeah, uh, even segueing down into chapter two, Chrysani is left all alone in the darkness, and she feels all this cold and evil. Yes, because and, and we're, we're going to start a little bit of a theme for this part of the book where. Raceland's unconscious, but he can come back to consciousness when it is convenient. Convenient, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Race, when needed, Raceland ex machina. <laughs> 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 but you know, I know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how wizard fatigue feels. Maybe is that? Well, I was gonna say, is this I, not a D and D thing? No. no. Okay. Uh, well, I, I think it's supposed to be. It kind of is. Where like they need to rest. I don't really dock them for him just kind of appearing. I feel like. Why, if you're trying to rest, you're not going to rest when they're just, or you're not going to wake up and like try to help if they're just gathering firewood or something. You will only bring yourself out of it if you absolutely and, have to. That's why it, I it give was, them this. It was done well a couple of times when it's like Caramon's being an oaf and Raceland's like, Ugh, like yeah, it's just yeah. like groaning. And it does kind of feel, you feel the passage of time here because you do kind of feel where uh, Raceland's resting, he gets one hit point back, something happens, he has to go, Ugh. Ugh. And spend that hit point, and then he's out again. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, if there's one thing that I'm going to miss, but I like this little last callback to it, is Chrysania is, is when she's alone in the darkness. Immediately, I thought this of this idea of like, okay, in the last book, which was really heavy with like uh, religious mm-hmm. illusions. Uh, she has made her choice to follow Raceland and yes. has now bamfed into this. Yeah. And she is feeling a bet. She is like ha- is racked with 
uh, all these feelings of, of of the god that Paladine has abandoned. Her. She defied. She defied. How defied many times? Him. Two almost. Three, <laughs> almost maybe. three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and that that he she is abandoned by him. If there's one thing that I I do, I don't know if I want to say I miss it, but this book, uh, the book two is really devoid of all of, like, this first book in the trilogy is really heavy on its uh, religious overtones. There's not a lot in this one. Well, book two does not have there, a lot. There's, but there's there is. enough. There's, 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 there's enough. just yes. enough. Yes. There, there's, there's enough, and there's a lot that deals with, okay, the gods have been gone, you know, quote-unquote, gone for a hundred years. Right. We get this idea that they're not really gone, gone, because her pendant still lights up and everything. Yeah. Um, but her pendant starts to, because they're in the evil mm-hmm. place and because basically there's the darkness barrier from the gods, mm-hmm. Yeah, she her, can't even throw out the window. Well, yeah, her yeah. pendant, her pendant's running out of batteries, I, running out of batteries, <laughs> and it keeps getting dimmer. I thought and that was because her faith in Paladin was like slowly probably both. I, both. I, I, I didn't both. take it as like the darkness right. bringing her, and I thought that was like her. Oh, and the, so the, this the, is, the darkness, and she, is, she now has the stained robes. Yeah, and yeah. So I see it's where like, you're going. So yeah. that's what I saw was like as as the light slowly dims away. The, dark, the darkness is just the curse from right. the mage who dove off onto the gate. Right? Yeah. Correct. So okay, having not researched this at all, I'm just going on blindly. Yep. Yep. So Let's super, super, super well, and, and actually, fans uh, can illuminate. Uh, yeah, f- um, to put it into perspective. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I've only read book one. Right. I got a little bit into book two um, on accident. I was listening to the audio book. <laughs> you, you slipped and fell. Uh, no, I was listening to the, audio, <laughs> the abridged audio book on YouTube yeah, because right. I read like all of this this week. It's been a busy month. <laughs> hi, hi, fans, <laughs> friends. Um... What were we talking about? So the audio version, you're into... The- Oh yeah, the abridged. Audio, it's available on YouTube. It's a little. Uh, the guy who does Tass's voice makes me kind of want to rip my ears off, um, <laughs> or fill them with cement. I don't. Is that know. what I kept hearing? Like a little, like high pitched, a yeah. little weird. A yeah. little. I was like, I'm sitting down in the living room. Oh and it's my just god! Like, and you know, and you, know, oh, and you know, the chapter I started doing it in was the one where Tass is in oh. the abyss. I'm like, oh my god! It's it's too much of that guy doing Tass. <laughs> Clob, you should just be Tass. <laughs> um, Why? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, but we, we do get a Careful. very, very cool uh, view of from the tower to the outside right. during the curse. From the tower well, the, the question, to the outside. The question <laughs> that I have down is, these walls. Uh, anyway. So at this point, how much power... All these banshees crawl. Okay. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. Oh, Shrek, Shrek. For the- <laughs> <laughs> Why do these podcasts take so long? I, have- I don't know. I don't <laughs> but, know why our podcast generally goes like two hours. But... So how much power do the gods have at this point? Because like you said, she she her medallion still lights up. It still has I think, power. It's, a, I think it's a question so of faith. What the are, gods, because, not the gods so power. so the gods have not technically left. You now though must approach the gods yeah, with they, enough faith and they will do some things. They for don't you. care. It's it's not that they don't have any power. They still have right. a bunch of power. They're just not using it. They're saying yeah. screw you. You guys caused this. Right. We're not touching you. Goodbye. Peace out. <laughs> exactly. That's that's there's they just don't care. Right. Right. Um we we flash back from Chrysania who's all abandoned and feeling mm-hmm. sad. Um she to back to Caramon. Um you know, and Caramon has a has white lip marks on his neck, which yes. means he's getting like sucked on by yes. some sort of incubus. Especially this evidently these are spirit leeches. Yeah, some yeah. sort of, yeah, really yeah, they, cool. I think, I well, it does, I think it, uh, they are, like, most of them are wearing robes we get later on. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just whoever was left in the tower during the time of the curse is just stuck there now. Yeah, yeah they're just dead. As just... a blood-hungry, uh, blood-hungry ghost, which I thought, super cool, but again, Weiss, Hickman, creepy, awesome. Awesome, they yes. do this, and this continues into chapter three, I mean, Chrysanthia comes back, she finds... Pause! Um, so what I've written down here is <laughs> I thought that the beginning of chapter three was a song. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, she called him Ray Slim. <laughs> oh, right. oh, I, I right. Yes, because it's, it's in it's in italics, <laughs> and it's like in, I'm like, she called him Ray Slim, but then fisting damn to this, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> it's like a, when, Michael Williams, what are you doing? <laughs> when you told me that, I was like, it's like. An, 80s, just yeah. hair metal. You can go back and just something by the Bullet Boys, perhaps. Never had something by the Bullet maybe Boys. Maybe that, maybe because that was in my brain at the maybe, time. Maybe. I don't. 
it, it was late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I'd been writing notes, and I, I just look over at the book, I'm like, what the? How can we be certain? <laughs> the blood yeah. smell has driven you mad! I don't know, I can't. So, Tracy says, here is the first indication to us that the flow of time has been diverted from its previous course. Oh, uh, yes, he was not supposed to come back like this. Yes. No. Yes. Through the front gates, he was. He comes, he comes too early. You got it right, because chapter three, we have these great floating minion heads that can talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. <laughs> Luke is not in control right oh. now. Luke and Claw both just died a little. But here we have in chapter three, where I won't lie, by this point, they're doing darkness well, but I am feeling that it's plotting at this point. Yes. I, I was getting a little yes, bored. Yes, get up and do something, sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, Don't just sit there and cry. Yeah, get up and, and then she finally does. She goes over, she rips the curtains down, mm -hmm. makes some little blankets. <laughs> um, she covers up Caramon, goes and rips another curtain down. She comes over, snuggles with Raceland for a while underneath the curtain. Yeah, there's a Our lot of... Our body heat will keep us warm. There's mm -hmm. a lot of like post-apocalyptic survival, but it's kind of boring <laughs> yeah, as well. Like, really, you know, a lot of inner thoughts. I don't know. And, no, I, I, I liked it. Um, there, there, was, there was an immediate threat around them. I agree. I like the thread. It just seemed to go for too long. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, the thread is awesome, and what the picture that is painted is really cool, but uh, the chapters altogether are a little bit too long. Uh, so you're stuck in that awesome situation mm -hmm. with not a lot happening, just for me, just a little too long. Yeah. It, it's happening just a little bit too long where you're, you're starting to drag down. But then chapter three, things start to pick up. Yes. Yes. Because uh, we, we go back in time yeah. in Raceland's mind. Well, we get a nice, awesome, big, long chapter that should have been a part of book or uh, I was volume say, one. Your bit, the reason you are a red cloak is yes. because you were like, why was And this? actually, you know, we I did have a big, long conversation with Brendan on Facebook. Um, you know, he had brought up some points about the... Um, Last half of time of the tw time of the twins. Yes, yes. that's the book. I'm sorry. <laughs> Test of the twins is over yonder, and it keeps catching my eye. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, but my uh, my my big problem that I forgot to bring up on the podcast was yes. that there should have been this epic confrontation between Raceland and Fist and Dantalus. Yes. And all we get is we get just kind of get it in passing, like, oh, he sucked all the power, or I sucked yeah. all the, I sucked all the power out of him. Yeah. Like, that's all we get. And really, that's what the end of that book should have been, is probably, like, this epic arc of well, him killing Fist and Dantalus, and sprinkled I, you know, in with a little bit of caramel. I think we had another comment about this on Facebook where somebody said, that it seemed like, or was it in the podcast? I don't even remember. Mm. That uh, Raceland was just too powerful. It seemed like he was. That, that was me and Brennan. That was that, you. That, and, yeah, okay, that was, that was. That was okay. I remember reading yeah. through that conversation, and I was. I agree. This was something that should have probably been in the first book. Right. And I didn't think of it at the time, but then once it was brought up, I'm like, yeah, you know, that probably should have been in there. But to defend the decision, maybe a little bit, you ha you would have then. Two kind of massive arcs going. Well, yeah. I don't no, know. If that's, you would. That's, that's what I'm saying. You don't have the Caramon thing be a massive arc. Yeah, but I think the Caramon they, started they, starting out the book the way they did in order to be able to get mm. Caramon to the point where he's warrior Caramon yeah. again. Uh, yeah. We had to go through I, that I, I massive was, arc. I, was gonna well, I actually liked the fact. I, I wanted to find out more about how Rayson killed Fistadantilus. Mm -hmm. I liked the whole pa the whole fact in passing though. Here's, because yeah. of the fact that it still leaves that big question open, like we talked about okay. last time, yeah. about who really is who yeah. in here, the whole here, race here's what, and well, and, and, and we get a big old chapter about this, and at the end, you still don't know. Here, I know. <laughs> here's what I like that. I, no, I, I do, I like, I, that. I do yes, like the mystery. I, that, now at the end of this, we're almost, now when we get this little backstory here, I'm almost thinking, is Fisted, A, is Fisted Dantilus really real was he ever actually a person i mean is fisty real or it, shut up <laughs> dude i, I know it fisty. happens or fist or is fist and dantilus <laughs> shut up bob <laughs> has fist and dantilus been pretending to be raceland now that was a thought yes, that crossed yes. in my mind at this here's point. what i one one comment on what we just talked about though I, I think it's it's kind of again that epic story uh narrative of the hero the hero's journey that you want to I think it was a smarter choice to go with the everyman. Caramon is kind of yes, the everyman. Yes, yes. Raceland well, is no longer a person who people... Not everybody. Mm -hmm. I know there's tons of Raceland fans, but nobody can identify with him any, anymore, or a lot of people can't. Um, so I feel if you follow him, he loses his mythos. Yeah. Like Just like when you go back in time and learn about how Darth Vader became Darth Vader, 
it's not cool anymore. Okay, no. You know what I'm no, saying? That, you know what I'm saying? You've got to leave is, stuff that in That is mystery. George Lucas's fault, first of all. <laughs> and, you could have made that cool. And I will, That's true. You could have. I I no, let's start when he's 10. Why? <laughs> Sorry. I will say, too, that I agree with you, Bob, where you had to follow Caramon because earlier, we, especially in the first three books, he didn't really have an arc. This is he, no, his he, arc, no. and he has Correct. to have something. I agree. If we just went with the... Uh, Buff Caramon, who will just follow his brother's orders. Why are we? Reading I'm, and you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna disagree. You know, you know what? Have... I'm gonna say, pull back the curtains, because I always like to say, hey, these are real people writing these books. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if on the cutting room floor, that fight was in the first book. Oh, and when they were plotting uh, okay. out this trilogy, they said, okay, our first book kicks butt. We have the we have the raced and fisty fight, and we have the destruction of. Of uh, so I, I, Istar, what are we doing in the second I'm, book? I'm jumping ahead of you a little bit. Yeah, so was book two just always doomed? I, I kind of feel like, okay, no, yeah, I'm going to say it right now. I think book two is the weakest of the trilogy. And, and I, I don't know. You I'm are not. the weakest link. Good yeah, guy. and if it I, didn't, I, if I it didn't know. have this fisty fight, it'd be really bad yeah. to me. Ooh, okay, you yeah. know, so okay. I feel like they almost pulled it out. And because it is weirdly like, why would you throw this massive fight into a memory in it, chapter three? Yes. It saves book one in my mind. So, of, so of maybe, this. maybe that, maybe that. Like, is, I, I will. I, I do want to rewind I, real quick before we get too yeah, too, yeah, far, yeah. too far ahead of it. Um, that I I disagree with you, Paul. Um, <laughs> I'm all right about, with that. About um, Caramon's arc in book one, I feel I feel like these could have been intertwined mm -hmm. or maybe. Maybe you know. Except then we would be complaining that they're jumping from two no, different no, no, things no, too no, much. No, 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 I, I, no, no, I can no. see where you're saying because it'd be really neat to see the rise of one brother, the fall of another. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ju juxtaposed okay. <laughs> at the go. same time, right? Like I, I feel like actually that's really strong. Yeah. But uh, I, however, but, however, then we don't have you know we had a ton about establishing yes. Chrysania. Yes, we had a ton about the came, about establishing the whole aspect of why the why the cataclysm came, right? And true. we 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 would have had two hundred more pages in book one. I, I agree. Yeah, but it may, maybe it should have ended somewhere else for volume one. Yeah, um, time of the twins, and then maybe I, I guess I feel I like they had to. End although with the you could First really of all, you hop could... on my saddle. Let's get in this time machine. Let's go back to the eighties and let's figure out what the heck was going yeah, on. Yeah, I feel like I feel like they could have probably whittled down though a lot. Of the King Priest stuff, yes, we went yes, non. Yes, yes, yes. We we went nonstop about the allusions to the church with the King Priest. I'm just gonna. I, I think Hickman really had an axe to grind. Wanted to get a lot of religious stuff off his chest into this novel, but a lot of that could be taken back a, a peg. You know. Uh, well, yeah, I think you also have to establish why the gods smited the world. That's <laughs> yeah. And there had to be a very, 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 very important good reason right. that, for the gods to get that. But you know, that was covered. But you know what? No, you know what? I, I I do feel like, but it's a convoluted reason in a lot of yes, ways. I'll, why? Yes, also yes, and why why <laughs> do, why the gods smote the world? Like why didn't they just go back to this whole Genesis idea? They should have been going back. They going back to Istar. We should have been seeing murder and rape in the streets, and it was a world. World that was so evil that the gods decided to smite it. Just go Genesis on it and make yeah. it simple instead of and this make, make it really, the, make it the flood. In the really convoluted the Caramon, star, you know, Caramon could build an ark. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, they rob from everything. It, it, Why not? Instead, instead of, two, of this, two of each, two of each species on it. <laughs> let, let's just talk about this. In, well, they're going. They're let's doing. Just, we're going to talk about this in terms that you can like really accept here, Bob. Star Wars. Yes. Where we had all this idea of what had happened previously, <laughs> and then we go to the prequels and we find out that you know Istar really wasn't that bad. There was just a corrupt, yeah. There was just a corrupt government or Senate, and that's why the mountain. Yeah. Mountain actually, mountain now mountain I'm thinking them. about this right now as a stream of consciousness. But when you think yeah. about it, the god. What the happens gods, to a little pebble in a stream of consciousness? The gods, <laughs> but the gods striking down Istar is kind of a bunch of crap. This, this podcast, that's what happens. <laughs> Club. Yes. yes. Why? Why is because that? because Sorry. you put when you put it in those terms, it's like saying, okay, medieval Europe, the Pope uh, wants to be so close to God that God destroys the world. What he destroys innocent men, women, and children because an overreaching. Uh, religious bureaucracy wants power. Mm -hmm. the, 
Like again, I feel it's much stronger if you say all of society mm. was irredeemable. Like you could have said all the races were fighting with each mm. other. There was massive violence, bloodshed. It was all. Uh, it should have been. They should have fire Genesis and the, brimstone coming from the sky. <laughs> dogs and cats <laughs> living <laughs> together. <laughs> I mean, Hickman is steeped in religion. Why didn't? Why instead of going with? He's even going with allusions to Sodom and Gomorrah with the destruction from a from a. Uh, you know, an asteroid from heaven. Why wouldn't he have made? The, See, it, and it doesn't actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, right now in it, it's actually really doesn't make a lot of sense why the gods destroyed Istar. And all right, I'm gonna try to defend this. I am. I'm actually leaning towards how you think, but I'm still gonna <laughs> yeah, try to defend. Yeah, yeah, hey, I guess it here's is. Here's a butter knife. Defend this. Yeah. I guess it is <laughs> a city no, only. Not, not really. In my mind, that was just one view is right. in, Ist in Istar. Maybe throughout the entire yep. world, everything was the same as, as it is in Istar, where there is corrupt government. Everybody's corrupt. It right. wasn't, so that's why... And they, they did didn't. talk about it a so, little bit. That's why the planes were burning. Yeah. That's why Solus had acid rain it's, or it's whatever those, happened to it. I agree. I'm defending it with a butter knife because I don't really agree yeah. with it, but right. I kind of agree with how you're well, saying Well, and it's more now, like pride. He's going more for, like, Egypt. Yeah. And yeah. how Pharaoh would not yeah. bow. He, he started Egypt and then he ended um, uh, Noah, Noah and the Ark. Yeah, like, yeah. What did yeah. everybody else do? Uh, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then I get it. I mean, I, I see why it happened, and it's we're very we're picking many nits. Yes, uh, yes. I have I have a whole. But a, a bunch of nits picked together does make a substantial cotton ball. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we could almost knit a sweater at this yes, point. With yes, the we could nits. almost <laughs> stitch together a really good story. <laughs> that would be at least a pot. But I feel that would be a very itchy sweater. Yeah. But but <laughs> no, again, but again, I love everything that's going on in this world. Yes, I, I mean, just too. you know it's kind of you know you have that friend who just keeps making bad decisions. Yes. Look, guys, I told you the Burger King thing. <laughs> Don't no, 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 talk no, no. about Paul, it's okay. They're talking about you, me. You, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you have you have that friend who keeps making bad decisions, but you still love them. Mm -hmm. And this that is this trilogy to me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, like like I, I remember when we saved the world from Tekesis, and that was that was a pretty good time. And why are you doing ecstasy in my kitchen? <laughs> um, I'm okay. gonna let you sleep on the couch. I'm gonna let you sleep <laughs> on the couch, but you know what? You're not gonna come over again. Okay, you know what? In a couple months, you're gonna keep I the wallet know, with you in your pants pocket while you sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I was talking to my girl. She's acting kind of funny. <laughs> I know you're funny too. <laughs> um, um, I'm all dull. So, uh, so Raceland. Uh, so anyway, back in time, Raceland fisty fight. So what we stop calling it fisty. So, so anyway, <laughs> just. Chapter, I'm going to go fisty. Chapter fisty, three. Fisty all the time. I'm so sorry that I, I shorthanded it to yeah, fisty. Yeah, you did. Yeah. If yeah, Star Wars did. has you a kit this. fisto, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a picture of that fight. Fisty fisto fight. <laughs> no, yes. no you, have to find, you have to find fisto from He-Man. Oh, oh that, I have that figure. Okay. Yes. <laughs> put him in a, ro you do. Put him in a black robe. He's been featured. <laughs> yes. He been. has been featured, but not in a black robe. Not in a black there robe. There we go. Um, but anyway, it is the day Fiston <laughs> Dantilus will choose the... Apprentice. His apprentice. His apprentice. Yes. So Fiston fired. Fist and Dandalus. Really, really, really actually, it's the day that Fist and Dandalus is going to choose who he's going to sacrifice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he enters the chamber with his bloodstone pennant. And by the way, it's Margaret's birthstone. So that's oh. why she thinks it's cool. Uh, oh, okay. You yeah. get a murder. You get a murder. You get a murder. <laughs> so um, everybody else, I love she's this. Only, she's only one state over. Be nice. <laughs> I, all, I love this because everybody else tries to impress them by doing their magic tricks, right? They've all been up studying, cramming all night for the exam. And they're, but they're but they're in like the room that has the magic dispel, barrier. Dispel magic, yeah. 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 There's no magic. It's yeah. like it's like you can't do anything in it, but at the same time, we're just going to read words, mm -hmm. you know. And, they, and they, I, I do I do like that idea. It's it's purely it's not about the showmanship of what you do. It's about the uh, like the science of how you have right. done it. Your right. verbal components, your somatic components, your material components. I play a wizard in D and D. I'm sorry, um, <laughs> but I love what Raceland does here. Oh, just for the plain oh, fact yeah. that I love it. Great callback to the original Chronicles when they were mm -hmm. the when they were the traveling carnival. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. yeah. When they were playing the county yeah. fairs. That's where that was from. I'm yeah, like, I'm like I remember this from somewhere. Yeah, well, well, that, that good guy. Was I it in the Chronicles or was it in? No, no, it was the Chronicles. It was talking about it. Is that Winter Night? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, when they're in the city, yeah. they have to live for a while. It was, it was a real slow. Oh, Caramon, that's right. The Caramon, traveling circus. Caramon was the strong man. Yeah. And Tika was a stripper. Tika was a stripper. <laughs> Tika was a stripper. <laughs> Tika, Tika, was a weird, could... Tika was the weird snake lady that for some reason you ate and, she felt, was... and felt weird watching she sitting was next to your Britney Spears. Sitting, what, what sitting did... next to your father. <laughs> what, what, did, what did Tannis do? Like he could see people in the dark or something? Yes. What do your elven eyes see? Um, Whatever he did was stupid. Yeah. Was yeah. Yes. <laughs> was that surprise? He, and he, was he complained no. in the corner, yeah. but all of a sudden he, he, he did. A lot. He does. He does a bunch of sleight of hand. He does a bunch of what we would call in, you know, our real world Earth six sixteen the uh, <laughs> C one magic. C one thirty five. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. What we would call what we, we, you know magic. He does a little pen and teller show. Yeah, he yeah. does. Oh he, yeah, for sure. Know, he makes explosions. So happen. why is he why does... is that a cool thing? And why? Be, because Fissidentalus is trying to figure out how he's doing stuff. Yeah, exactly. Because dispel magic is in this, yet he's doing something through. Well, it's, and it's Fist and Dantalus's dispel magic spell. Right. Yeah, and so it's not like some apprentices weak powerful. thing. Weak thing. It's yeah. it is the most powerful dark wizards so for, dispel magic. But, yeah. And he's just but saying, for, has... for like for like a hot second. Raceland, everybody thinks, has tricked is, him. is more powerful than anybody in that room. Like, yeah, he's tricked how, him. It, how? It, is, it is brilliant, and I, I love it. Uh, so that that means that he will choose Raceland mm. as his apprentice. But he does figure it out. He, he, oh, yeah, he you've won. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> feeble fisty. Who who wants to be an apprentice? <laughs> okay, so, so, you, so you think you can magic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it turns out then that... Fist and Dantalus is kind of like Aleister Crowley, and he <laughs> Mr. Crowley. He, inv he invites Raceland to lie on the stone slab to perform the Moonchild Ritual. I can't help it. <laughs> I got real uncomfortable during a lot of this. Yeah. I, the way it was worded and what was happening. He placed his hand on his chest. It was kind of weirdly. It got a little rapey for me, and I didn't really yeah. like it. Yeah, I, yeah. And, and all, so, all of a sudden, Fist and Dantalus became Liberace. Yes, <laughs> yes. I actually see. You know, li now it's gonna be Liberace. Now, <laughs> Liberace in a black coat. I don't. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> with poor Matt Damon sitting next to him. Uh, we have not recorded the intro yet. That's what I'm going hey, to do. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 not really. Not really. <laughs> yeah, um, but it, it, earlier on in the chapter, we did get like sort of like a another glimpse into uh, pubescent Raceland. Yeah. Of him being in his classes and always being the the odd one out. Right. Um, and. He, was, I, he I, was the goth kid playing with his magic cards in the back of the room. Well, he was... <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. 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 whoa. There, there were a bunch of goth kids... <laughs> whoa. There were a bunch of goth kids hanging out together, like, trying to be magicians, and then he just happened to be, like, the one kid who had Pokemon cards instead of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> like, this is all super, like, nerdy. Wow. I, I, I feel we've hit a nerve there, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> I collected both, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, wait, we get a little, I, and I actually, I kind of do like this little, these little peeks back into the, like, you know what, Raceland slept with Caramon's girlfriend that one time, or whatever that was. In the <laughs> no, he didn't, it just got awkward, so she got up and left. <laughs> okay, whatever it was. <laughs> at any rate, it was inappropriate. And then we get a little look at, back at how he was then, and I, I like the idea of him being there to become the apprentice and what is he? He's staring at the other students the entire time. Like, just, like, they're all, like, studying hard, and he's just off in the corner just staring at them. And he would, like, mess with them the entire time, just, like, proving. I think, I think it's um, actually called one-upsmanship in, yes. in the book. Like, oh, yes. like he's, oh, yes. he's, hold, he's obviously holding back. If he comes in there... Oh, yeah. And what is he? He has, like, a... An illusion spell hiding his face. He has yes, which the reveal to Fisty was great. I thought the, fist, it, the Fisty yeah. reveal. Yeah, when it was just like, now you see me. It's like what? Oh, because oh, again, remember, Fist and Dantalus has the power of seeing. So he's well, been Fist and Dantalus. I feel has been look has been trying to pay attention to not pick this dude that he's seen in his visions. Mm -hmm. Because he's seen Raceland come after him in his visions, well, so he's. I, I I get the feeling here that he's on guard, so that when all of a sudden he, you know, mission him when Raceland Mission Impossible's the mask off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mission it's Impossible. Like, oh, I, I like, missed that. Holy crap! Oh, oh, oh man! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh man! So anyway, uh, we got 
Raceland laying on this table, mm-hmm. and and right, Fisty comes in and is doing all his magical incantations. <laughs> same, um, same and he's supposed words. to be and he's supposed to be frozen because he's supposed to be wearing a he's supposed to have the pendant on his chest or whatever. Well, so yeah, think, the bloodstone think, pendant. Yeah, the the Fist and Dantalus isn't fro isn't frozen, but yeah, I don't. I, no, I'm sitting here, Raceland, my fist. Raceland on the Raceland, table. Raceland on the table. I think had a spell. Cast? I don't think it was because of the stone that was keeping him. I think it was a spell that... Well, no, because Fist and Dantalus doesn't have the stone. Exactly. He doesn't have the stone. But did the stone keep him frozen, or was it another... No, no, no. The stone it, is no. supposed to facilitate I the was transfer. Gonna say, yes, yeah, the, yes. st- the stone is what he tricked him with, that, that, yeah, that he can transfer back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because he had the no, stone. No, he was... Raceland was yeah. totally complicit in Okay, all I didn't know if you had, like, a spell that froze him there, no, or, no, like, no. supposedly his, froze his, him. His whole thing was that, I want to... I'm here to learn. I'm he, going along with the moon child ritual, but because right I want, as I'm about to be implanted with the Antichrist, I'm going to flip this whole narrative yeah. and I'm going to implant yeah. Fisty but I, with the Antichrist. But, in or, but I want. I need to know how to do the ritual. Yeah. So he's, he's yeah. So he's yes. He's, he's there. He's there. And then he's muttering the words at the same time. Yes. So So Fisty is muttering the words. It's doing yep. the, the loud and kind of, right. And and and. And Rayson is gripping the the bloodstone pendant, mm-hmm. right, and quietly doing the same thing. Okay, okay. Back now to channel back. I got confused in this part with the whole bloodstone thing. Neckbeards are yelling right now. No, I have no idea. They're always, they're always yelling. <laughs> no, I got confused because all, we're always confused. I'm, How many bloodstones are there? I don't There's know. only one. One. Is it just the one? I, I understand this. It was, but, but how did Raceland get it? Sleight of hand. Sleight of yeah, hand. He, he, okay, he yeah, did. He, he, he did. He pocket. drops that like so, so like sleight of hand. So dumb, huh? Like kind of, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. that was that was his yeah. when he because when I was first how you get your hand on my stack because when yeah. I was first yeah. reading hand, this y'all. when I was first reading this <laughs> I almost had the I, I did a weird thing in my head when I was first reading this about Fist and Angelus has the bloodstone but. Raceland has the bloodstone from the, the future. future. Bloodstone. Oh. And so that's oh, uh, I know I thought that no, I thought that for a hot second, but it, it like uh Fist and Dantalus is like like fades away, like in his hand. Yeah, it, oh, yeah, okay. it's an illusion. Yeah. Oh yes, he gave him the illusion. Uh, so there were two bloodstones. There were two, it's just uh, the, the illusionary one, the one Fist and Dantalus has was an illusion. Yeah, it yes. was it was just yeah. one of those that yeah. and, and I did The I, one I, was I, a fake one you buy at Pawn America. No, it wasn't a fake one. It was one that's an illusionary one. <laughs> Raceland, Raceland just made it. It was. I, I yes. love this as a. He bought it on Etsy. On yeah, it's real nice. Uh, oh, hey, there is nice stuff on. You can it, oh, if you go to Ra- if you go to Raceland's Reddit page, it actually shows you how to make your own. <laughs> <laughs> you need flour and glue and uh, tempera, some starch. tempera paint, some uh, herbal <laughs> essential oils. <laughs> you always need those essential oils. Yes, they're, they're, they're essential. They're, you got a little bit of a tummy ache. You just you just put some essential sage on your bloodstone. All right, so <laughs> Rayson, so Rayson's getting sprayed down with the essential oil. <laughs> Fisodant- well, Fisodantilus is doing the ritual. Oh. Rick, Rayson's doing the ritual back to him. Yeah. I don't know how to do this ritual. What essential oils is Fisodantilus using? He's got his little box open. He's whipping out vials. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Well, What's we're he spending doing a lot of time road? on this ritual because things get... It's we're, like the saddle in the time machine. We are spending way too much time on the ritual because then what happens with the fight is way cooler. Well, then let's I get like, there. Hey, All by right. the way, a little weird drop here. It says something about the drow in here, which I never thought the streams crossed. I thought uh, Forgotten Realms, no, Dragonlands, the... they should not cross. And he says, you underestimated me. You wrenched part of my life force from me during the test in return for protecting me from the drow. Ooh, 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 you, what do you got ooh, to say? Because I got ooh, the, the notes. Yep. Uh, well, that, that was what was going to kill him in the... In his test, the, 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 the dark elf. But I'm just saying, they're calling dark elves drow, I which th- is not the same as the drow that are in Forgotten Realms. But it's weird that they... So what's ended up happening is Dragonlance no longer uses the term drow. Mm-hmm. So weird, like, behind the scenes. Because drow, oh, can oh. Be, drow became so freaking popular in Dragonlance. Okay, so you so you know what? You had more money and you bought the annotated version. <laughs> you, went, you, went, you went on eBay and you got the mythic rares. And now, <laughs> and now, and now we're battling it out. <laughs> I'm mana... I just want... I just dropped a mythic. <laughs> I'm mana screwed and you just summoned an Eldrazi. Let's see we, it. We, 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 we don't say drow anymore. 
more it's like we don't use certain terms from yeah. the 60s. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah I love it because this is so neckbeardy. It doesn't. Uh, the word drow does pop up occasionally in early Dragonlance novels and game product, which is a continual source of confusion for new readers. In the Dragonlance setting, the word drow is meant to refer to elves who have been cast out from their societies. They are the dark elf exiles of the Dragonlance setting, not the entirely separate race of drow that are found in Forgotten Realms. Oh, and by the way, the Greyhawk settings. <laughs> Shut up. A dark elf is a dark elf is a dark elf. Who no even cares? But okay. Uh, I don't know. There could be dark elves from different parts of the world. There that are. are. Maybe different. Um... <laughs> But then are they really dark elves or, you know, maybe it's a just if you're a get hung up on this, I'm going to get maybe, I'm maybe, hung up on sea elves. <laughs> maybe it's a discolored elf. Um, we got a little dry Okay, another really cool thing about the Fisty begins to Whoa. summon... Okay, sorry, Fist and Dan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Fisty. Clom dies Begins a summoning that. spell. Oh, and what happens? What, what does he bring forth from the nether Some regions? Some sort of demon. Oh wait, you can't say demon oh. in 1986 TSR world. Another interesting little you thing. You couldn't? You could not. Did, uh, they, did they not say demon? I don't know did why. My, did my brain autofill? It, it does not say demon. Uh, and, and it, or a creature I, it, from another plane. Yes, it autofilled. Just like the early Magic the Gathering games. Remember there was the one yes. card that came on that had the pentagram on the guy's back. Yeah. And that was a source of huge controversy. Remember, we are in the 80s. There's a huge satanic backlash. Like people are scared mm, yes. that Dungeon the Dragon stuff have to do with Satanism. And so TSR kind of went out and said, hey, by the way, when we summon stuff, it's like you creatures from like the nether me. regions. Oh, oh, follow me on this. They yeah. created a tulpa. They created and a this, tulpa. This is how they killed it. They <laughs> never bring it up again. I occasionally I occasionally like to summon something from my nether regions. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is why like very early versions, and I, now I'm speaking out, people will yell at me, but the very early versions of the monster manual and stuff are very highly sought after because there was stuff for... Oh, demonic stuff? Demonic stuff, oh. whatever, and, and, every, and stuff. Gods, I think you could if do we, a lot of stuff in gods. If, and, if we have anybody out there who has... Like, so send them our way. I, you don't have, no, just like take a picture. Slip I just, it, slip in a hundred dollar bill and on the back of the mylar that you've wrapped the book in. Because we'll re mylar it. Mylar. We'll re mylar it. Right. I'm in charge of mylar. That's that's Dungeons and Chiefs. <laughs> P.O. Box. We don't put anything Bob, in polypropylene. Six, Bob, six. Six. <laughs> Bob, Chief of Mylar, Dungeons and Dragons Incorporated. Oh, the sorry. big M. Tim Gilbert Media Inc. <laughs> Do you have Mylar needs? Talk to Tim Gilbert Media. Yes. Um, <laughs> Climb that corporate ladder. Keep it safe. Keep it fresh. Okay. So <laughs> Time to sleeve up. <laughs> All right. So we get this huge epic battle. Yes. That I, I, which, this is super awesome. This is what you wanted, Luke. Yes. Uh, back in the last book. And it's. I'm glad it's here because this first half of the book would be boring without it. Yes. So I'm glad it is here. And I agree it's kind of out of place. Yes. It's, it does work better in the other book. Uh, now that you bring it up. But yes. I like it. Here. Yes. Out of all of the books we've read so far, this is really the first time we've ever seen two magic users going at it. Yeah, it's, yeah. A normally, it's a first wizard's duel. Yeah, normally magic is just that one wizard who will shoot a fireball. Oh. And, or you know, or my, my army wizard is shooting well, I guess, yeah, yeah. A, yeah. a straight up wizard battle, yeah. yeah. Uh, what we did have... We've um, seen some like fights where wizards are used, but never well, like a Raceland, straight up duel. Raceland like, dispelled magic, that one dragon lord in um, Naraka. Okay. But like yeah. he was like behind the curtain and just kind of like did like, hey, screw yeah. you, dude. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, that they have gotten much better in these books at, at describing fights between yes. things. So that mm -hmm. they, you know, we had a little bit of an issue in the last trilogy of things getting lost sometimes. In the well, no, time. yeah, yeah, in Dragons of Autumn Twilight. Well, that's because yeah, we, that's that's we had 17 people fighting 17 other people. And they all went <laughs> <flipped> between <laughs> right. perspectives. Yeah. I mean, yeah. one perspective. Come, come, come spring dawning, like, where they were, like, fighting on Dragon Bad. They'd ironed it really out back. Good. They so, ironed yeah, it yeah. out. It's, so we should say early in the trilogy. Yes. So, yeah. Um, I love this because being pulled between the youthful strength and ancient knowledge of the two, the demon explodes, and then we just go into just fight montage. Just, yeah. Which so is great. the old guy and the young guy explode all over each other. Um, <laughs> um, here we go. The question of the day. We are yes. left to wonder. Right, we have a lot of questions so far. We, we have so far. Who won this fight? Did ooh, ooh, Raceland ooh, win ooh, ooh, or did Fist and Dantalus ooh, win? Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, what? I have no idea. 
And that's what I love. <laughs> I love the, I love the fact that you get to the end of this fight and you're like, and all of a sudden this opened up the door for me was, you didn't tell me who won the fight. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Big, big yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, so Fist and Dantalus used the blood stone. Yeah. Yep. The bloodstone to drain the power or to transfer his consciousness to another body? Question mark. Yeah. Um so shouldn't Raceland have gotten old or I don't um know. I don't know. I, I do like that it's left a mystery. Because it's not a movie and we don't get to see everything. But no, I understand. But, I, but I, he does I, look I, different after. Yes, he yes. He's still the brown hair, brown eyed. So to me... Yeah, but is he supposed to, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark get old or, you know, Emperor or Palpatine and I don't know. I, Palpatine so Emperor I, Shaw. I, I think they put a question mark on it. For my own personal understanding, I think it's fairly obvious that Raceland wins this. Just from a purely narrative standpoint that this would be the stupidest book in history if Raceland comes all the way to here and dies at the hands of Fist and Dantalus. But maybe not. But... but or, or is there no winner? Do they just become one? One, one. Yes. yes. That is what I think, is they just become one in... Homogenous wizard. I will tell you what the, the authors say. Okay. Margaret Weiss is going to play coy and say, she doesn't know. Um, and She says that about a lot of things. And spoiler-filled Hickman, uh, so don't uh, listen beyond if you don't want to know, Hickman says it was Raceland. Hickman's okay. like, Raceland won this fight and it's made clear in War of the Souls, a trilogy which we will eventually get to. Probably, like... Actually, yeah, Electric five Boogaloo, years year five. I think like two out of the three books are over there. <laughs> yeah, we got them. Yeah. Nice. So, um, um, all three. Those are all three. Oh, I put them in order Fallen too. Sun, uh, yeah, yeah okay. I put them in order. Look at me. Look at you. Um, um, you know, I don't. I don't. I don't know, and I do like the mystery, but I, I, have, so I at least want something concrete here. That's all I want. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, whether it's. That we know it's Raceland and we're following him down, um, a psychotic break. A psychotic <laughs> break because he well, and, and and I guess that is what's going on because he has Fist and Dantalus's memories. I guess I don't. So I, don't, I, I at least yeah, want to know. I don't. I don't. Fist and I don't see why anything beyond this point would make any sense if it's not Raceland because you still have all of the brother issues that will happen and everything. If it's Fist and Dantalus, why are we still going but to th maintain that, that, this? This could be so good too that it's Fist and Dantalus wins. But, like, Raceland screws with it a little bit, and now it's Raceland's memories are tied in with him. So True. he's because those emotions because, from his... Correct. Yeah. Because so he's... Raceland becomes a trill. So, kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, very good reference, by the way. Yeah. Um, but it could, be, it could be either... I can see how it could be either way here. And like you said, Luke... Since you're absorbing the memory, since you're absorbing the life force, the power force, and you are, you're actually able to think about things as the other person and remember things from the other person's memory, how does that leach on to your own core being? Right. If you and I were to fight Bob and I was to absorb you, am I going to... It would to be the same. Hot? Am I, am I it going, would just be the same. You, you two are close enough, am it would I just be the same. Am I going to start wanting to live on a compound in the woods full of <laughs> virgin women? Um, <laughs> Just easing down the pants of R. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. And if you if you won and you absorb yeah. you know you absorbed me, which you like IPAs more. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, I love hops. Um, <laughs> so, you know, no, so, no, I I want something concrete. I agree. I uh, what I want. I, I want I want it to be like. Race, I don't know if I race want that. on top of fisty, and just kind of what? Like, <laughs> and just him going like, oh, I did it. And then the power being, <laughs> the power being absorbed into him, and all of a sudden, and then and then like we get it from his point of view, like right. all of a sudden, what well, we do get, who am I? Like the power is just planted right in his base chakra, just. <laughs> I I, I want to know. Actually, I'm thinking of a really cool like. Um, Ron Howard, J.J. Abrams shot where the life force goes into him, and we're looking at his face, and we see like. We see like a bunch of Fissidentalus memories playing across his eyes, and then his hood, and then he like flips up his hood and walks out of the room. Yeah. See, I'm okay with them playing with it, coy. Yeah. I really don't care that we don't get an answer, but I feel like it's just kind of very obvious that it's racist. Well, we, they we, want to leave it nebulous so that we have these discussions uh, well, forever, but I really think it's. But even then, we still don't. We still don't know what Raceland looks like. That's true. Well, that is. I know. Yeah. I tell you what. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you something right now. The entire it's the entire series here. All three books deal have twins in the title. 
Yes. Therefore, we can probably make the logical leap that at least through the second book, yes, or the second volume here, we're going to have the twins. But wouldn't it be such a twist if he was dead the entire time? Dun, but dun, it, but dun. it would be so unsatisfying because the whole, all of the feeling and emotion, especially as we get into Thank book you. three, will only come if it's Raceland. If it's uh, if they it's call me M Night Shyamalan. I was gonna say, settle down, Luke Knight Shyamalan. I guess I don't. I don't really <laughs> even understand why it's much of a question. It has uh, to be it Raceland. Has to be. It has to be. It does. It's, it's left open, but we can make the yes. logical leap to say <laughs> yeah. yes. Well, yeah. I like. I like what a it twist. being. I like it being. <laughs> a little bit because then it lets you go into that psychotic break of Raceland a little bit where he's having that confliction. No, if it's going to be a psychotic break, it should be a psychotic break and I want to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the arguments in his head between Vist and Danilus and Raceland where it's like, wait, I want to do this. No, I don't. It, stuff like that. And that's what I've been missing from the first book. I talked about that in the last podcast is what happened to Vist and Danilus who used to be in Raceland's head. Yeah, I, there, but... Okay, so there's part of me that says that a lot of this is very messy, and that's why we're having trouble. And a lot of that is because we are, we are still, it's 1986, and these guys are cranking these books out fast, and it's really all coming from Hickman's mind, and I think it's a muddy place in there. <laughs> and I don't really think he knows. <laughs> yeah, and I think later, he sat around and thought about it, sipping highball whiskey, uh, and, and he's like... You oh, know what, crap. I kind of, I didn't really flesh that out. And he's had other books to come back, which we haven't read, and suss it out. But since we are discovering it like it's 86, this stuff is messy. And for the next decade, we'd be sitting with a bunch of people at a comic shop fighting this out. Because we wouldn't know. So as, okay. as two lives mingled within him, as hundreds of strange, conflicting memories surged through him, the mage reeled at the impact crouching beside the corpse of his rival, the black-robed mage who had been the victor stared the bloodstone in his hand. Then he whispered in horror, Who am I? You know what this is like? This is like pouring Captain Crunch and milk into a bowl, but the overpowering flavor is Captain Crunch. You will always taste the Captain Crunch. So Raceland <laughs> and, and Fisty so, has been poured into a bowl, but Raceland is really all you're ever going to taste. Yeah, but which, from the, which, which one is really in the sunken place? <laughs> is it Raceland or is it Fist and Dantle? I don't and, know. And all, we, all we know here is that Because Ra Raceland starts out strong and crunchy, but he gets more soggy and Fisty-like. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? And Fist and Dantle is really what's good for you, and that's why you're eating that. Raceland's all sugar <laughs> and lies. Seven vitamins and essential Vitamins and minerals. Essential. Seven essential oils and minerals. <laughs> <laughs> Rub it on your tummy if you got a tummy so, ache. So chapter okay. four. I feel like, I feel like riboflavin and fluoride should be slating this. <laughs> <laughs> the Dungeons and Dweets podcast brought to you by Rebo, riboflavin. <laughs> this would be a good place to break and talk about, Luke, how are you sleeping? Just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just fine. I love my worn out Serta. <laughs> Is it a Serta? No. Oh. <laughs> I had a cousin who got a Serta, and that was back in the day when Serta, didn't they advertise with sheep? They yeah, still yeah, advertise yeah, with no, sheep. Or, but no, the, the, their, their tagline was, I want my Serta. I don't remember that. And that kid, Meh. the first night I spent the night at his house, that's all he wanted. You know how sometimes kids get new things and they want to show it off? That's all I did. When we went to sleep, then I'm sleeping on the cold, hard floor. He slept in the basement. Yeah. On a sleeping bag. And then he's oh, there, my Serta. I, I love my Serta. I love my Serta. I love my Serta. Corporate Serta. sellout. <laughs> you scum. Every time uh, that, I see that Serta, it's like. swamp somewhere buried. Uh... <laughs> okay. So, so anyway, anyway. Moving on to chapter four. nine. Four. <laughs> Nine. Wow, my, my penmanship sucks. Uh, <laughs> no, it's my penmanship. Yeah, yeah. Claw's reading my notes. <laughs> All right, so after the big fisty... <laughs> Stop calling him fisty. Never. Never. Raceland fight. Uh, <laughs> um, we're, and it's very controversial, by the way. Uh, but... We what, calling him Fisty? <laughs> we show up into chapter chapter four and we're back in the current timeline. And woof, Whoa. what a long chapter this was. <laughs> that's, all, that's all. That's the first first notes I wrote down is actually woof in all caps. Long chapter. Yeah. So Chrysania is ministering to both brothers. He's, she's trying to make both of them comfortable. Uh, this is kind of awkward because she's in love with one, Caramon. And by the way, throughout the rest of this book, there's going to be this awkward building they of They have a, to have a love triangle. Of there. an attraction between Chrysania and yeah. Caramon as well. Triangle. <laughs> to, be fair, to be fair, we've been here for months. We've been with Caramon now for months. He's been away from Tika. Yes. It's been almost a year since he's been away from Tika. And there's 
gotta be some like blue ball at <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there we go so um but here we go so in the last podcast Clob, you brought up that Raceland you think fakes it sometimes turns on and off his cough yes uh to suit his own needs yep. um i would say that what you propositioned uh, is borne out in the annotations, because in chapter 4, uh, according to Tracy, it says, the effects of Raceland's chronic illness appear to be similar to a form of tuberculosis. However, the question has always remained just how affected Raceland actually was by his illness. When we were first playing with the first adventure module for a Dragonlance, uh, my friend Terry Phillips took the part of Raceland. When he spoke in the character during the game, he affected a hoarse, rasping voice. Each time he did, the room went silent as everyone strained to hear what he had to say. Margaret, also playing in the game, picked up on that, and she realized that this was something Raceland would do, even if his voice were okay, just so as to command attention. It's Doc Holliday. Yes. I wasn't quite as sick as I made out. Uh, yeah. He's I, doing this in some respects. I really like the idea. Effect. I really like the idea that that is how all this came about. That they yes, were I do too. Yes, I feel really bad for the person that chose to do that, because I feel like that's hard, a little hard on your... Uh... It's not that bad. For an extended D and D session, for an extent, I feel like yeah. that would hurt. Either that, or, like, either that, or you eventually just become Tom Waits. Yeah, you know, it, it's it, gonna it's be it's gonna be different the difference between the Raceland rasp and all of a sudden you sound like Tom Waits. For the rest <laughs> of your yeah, life. or, or it's like if you play a character that has like that has the long S's, it's it's just weird. Mm. You know, after a while you go, all right. My my, right. my drow kind of had the Batman voice, but it's I mean I think I think people just ha can have the the voice for that. Right. Yeah. And that that's kind yeah. of my. Right. The, but I like I the fact that, my throat that Rayson, again, he's the master of deception. And even his own sickness, he uses. Or, or sickness, no. raspy voice. Uh, the charlatan, we just saw him doing charlatan tricks with Vistendantilus, right? No, you are all fools. Yeah, he's a flim-flam man, Mr. Yeah, Luke. fiddle Fiddle-faddle. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love fiddle faddle. Uh, I, I do like a good fiddle faddle uh, and the chicken on it. Uh, anyway, wasn't there a chicken on a box of fiddle faddle? No, that's what chicken, are you guys that's talking that's about? That's chicken in a box. <laughs> no, no that's idea. chicken in a biscuit. <laughs> chicken in a biscuit. Yes, <laughs> I, fiddle I, I, fiddle faddle was like a like a I cracker see. jack thing with like caramel. Popcorn it was it was a different what version the, of cracker jack. Yeah. Yes. What the, was it like the knockoff version or no? It's just fiddle faddle. I just called fiddle it's, faddle. No, it's just fiddle faddle. It's just fiddle faddle. All right, I'm tweeting this right now. I feel like this is something that. Searching it because why do I remember a chicken? There is no chicken on the box of Phil. No, fell. there's like dang it. No, oh, okay. It's like you know you have you have checks and you have Crispix. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're, they're the same. They're thing, kind of the they're same different. idea. Exactly. Okay. So there's, yeah, there's the, no there's no trans fat. <laughs> well, we got that going for us, it's which is nice. Fell. Yeah, <laughs> which is nice. Thank you. Is it gluten free? Um, but anything <laughs> vegan. Why are they talking about snack food? Yeah, I, I don't really know. <laughs> I love Cheez-Its. Okay, how, yeah. uh, how, how do we get onto snack foods yeah. from Fisty's Fight? If you truly are a fan, you're going to put us on pause, you're going to walk down the, <laughs> to the local Quick Trip, and you're going to pick up some Fiddle Faddle, and you're going to come back and no, jump no, on to that be, while to, to be fair, you may need a time machine to find <laughs> Fiddle Faddle at, like, Red Owl. <laughs> <laughs> the fun, sweet, salty snack or the, the whole family. I was going to say, I don't know, it's, I thought Red Owl was a local thing. I don't know if anybody... I, was gonna say, I don't even know what a red... Is the a red the, yeah, the a and <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if anybody will know. But anyway, now nowadays you could say Kmart, because that's kind of a... It's yeah, a, well, Kmart's dead. Yeah, yeah, so we could say hey, Kmart. The one up, way up north is doing You great. can't buy your robes <laughs> at Herberger's anymore, or Glass Block, or <laughs> Glass. Yonkers. Those are all dead. <laughs> okay, Chrisania <laughs> brews up some tea for Raceland, which uh, he always drinks. Um... And Karamon asked to be sent home to Tika. Again, we're kind of back into this, uh, they're trapped post-apocalyptic in the tower. Yeah. And we're brewing tea, and we're having love triangles. And I just have this vision of, like, Chrysania just, wan just wandering around, like, she's lit the fire, and she's brewing tea, but she's still wearing the drapes. <laughs> now, this is also, I think, is this the area where Karamon kind of says, screw you to Raceland, and has Chrysania make it, versus... Him always making it for Raceland, uh, for the tea. Was that earlier that that happened? Because I know this is no, this it, is kind of where Caramon is kind of still saying, "I don't like you. You're it's, a dick." You're, you're thinking later because when they're in the funky inn later, oh, he does okay. that when okay. they're rest, I, when they're resting in the funky or inn. orders her to make it yeah. or whatever. Yeah, because that's when I, I kind of felt it felt like all in the family. 
and like Raceland was kind of the uh, the Carol O'Connor character. Just sitting <laughs> was Archie his, Bunker? <laughs> Archie Bunker just sitting in his chair. Go fix me some tea. Well, how much tea leaves you wanted it, Archie? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Chrysania, but whatever you want in it. Raceland is, Raceland is meathead. <laughs> he is a meathead. <laughs> get, out, get out of my chair. <laughs> One of these days, Chrysania. <laughs> Bang, zoom. Straight to the moon. <laughs> I, don't, well, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. Uh, yeah, no, that's not that's, when that's the honeymoon. That's the oh, honeymoon, okay. but that's still really that's good. Still, that's still relevant. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> he just comes out. <laughs> Care about. Well, Raceland, uh, what, what are we going to do? Well, Raceland, what, what are you going to do? Actually, those, <laughs> those arch archetypes work all the way through. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, Caramon, I feel bad for him because he's just wanting to be with Tika, you know, and he's got himself back into shape. He feels bad for what's happened, although. Yeah. Well, and know. he's starting to be able to see again. Now. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and yeah he's, he's fine now. Raceland he's... drops a bomb uh, bombshell, says. Tass is still alive. He dun, sent, dun, dun. He sent but he them, still lies about it. Yeah, he lies about it because I th he thinks he's dead. He's just yeah, saying yeah. he thinks he's alive. He says he sent him forward because he taught him to use the device. The device that we know he broke. Yes. Right? yes. Like is not around because right. it was not designed for him. Right. And this is where Chrysania is sitting there kind of going, Wait, but I remember, I remember Taz, mm -hmm. and right. on Rish just, just like gives her the. This the is eyes. the this is the well, first yeah. time we know we're a hundred years after the cataclysm. Yes. Well, like we haven't even known where we're at in time till till this chapter. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, again, kind of the drudgery keeps going on here. I do feel some of this is a little slow. Caramon has got to go to Palantas to get food and clothes. But, and but before all of this, I'm, I'm gonna bring this little part up here. Oh wait, where'd my phone go? It's in my phone. One second. That's a. Uh... Check out um, Casper. No, no, we're not, getting, <laughs> we're not getting paid. I'm not mentioning it. Until um, I get my chapter, own matches for free. It's chapter 41 in my book. Um, sort of around the. Chapter 41. Or, page, sorry, 41. page 41. Um, but her hesitation only lasted only a, mo only a moment. Resolutely, she put her hand on his shoulder and shook him. If he does, she said, she said to herself grimly, I will stop him. Mm. I did it once. I can do it again. Now, this is the second time we have heard a line like this. Mm -hmm. And I remember, because I'm going to insert the audio clip here. <laughs> ding, ding. My whole life is within my grasp. Look at Caramon's face, Dennis. He knows. <coughs> I killed him once. I can do it again. Yes. Chrysania and Raceland both referring to doing bad things to Caramon. So, Ooh, good uh, catch. Yes. I, oh, I that's just, a really good catch. I, I read that line like, oh, that is so, like, probably the best sentence these two have ever yeah. written and just tied through book two to another book two. Yeah. I'm going to double check just to make sure that that is the book that it came from, though. <laughs> I'm hopping on I think you're right. I'm hopping I, on our YouTube I right now. I do think you're right, because it's when they were in the traveling circus. The Dragon Arm. Yeah, uh, that was actually our Dragons of Winter Night uh, yeah. part one intro. Yes. Or no, yeah. sorry, part two. My brother. You can find it on YouTube if you look for uh, look up uh, Dungeons and Dweebs on YouTube. Um, <laughs> we all... got a lot of new stuff. Yes, yeah, so I actually yeah. I just posted a bunch of our uh, Red Rising stuff. Um, Red Rising fans, if you're here, if you have fan art, we are looking to feature your fan art in our videos. Yeah. So. So at any rate, um, <laughs> so Caramon goes to town. Caramon has to go buy groceries. Yeah, groceries. Yeah. Oh, but be but careful. But Rayson gives us a really good rundown. The point of this whole chapter then is that Rayson gives us a good rundown of the portals and why they were created. Yes, because yes. we got to know this whole portal thing, right? Yeah, um, the, like and the, the one they were only meant for transport. Yeah, the one he was trying, the one he's trying to open was not created to go to the abyss. But that's where it goes. It's it, like they created well, it, them, and then it had this unintended side effect. Yeah, yeah. They're like right. the they're like they're like the monsters ink doors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it, that's cool. <laughs> I have you, going with your analogy, Claude, for uh, where you were saying things are like the atomic bomb. I think it's kind of continuing with this atomic bomb analogy, mm -hmm. where it's like the scientists, uh, in, like say the Manhattan Project, were so intent on what they were doing that it's only after they dropped it that Oppenheimer was like, "I have become the angel of death." You know, it's like, oh, well, we realized what we've just created. They created the portals mm. for one thing, and then kind of realized the scope of what they had created, and then or whatever oh. the science, or whatever the scientist was trying to make when he made the yeah, exactly. when he made the Powderpuff Girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
power puff. That <laughs> is Sorry, so weird. What <laughs> Sugar, <laughs> spice, and everything nice, and then he spilled in some chemical X. <laughs> <laughs> And don't they talk about how, like, the first wizard to go through this and go to the abyss just never returned? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, no, because it's the abyss. It's just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's there's yeah. no way out of it, really. It's the abyss. Well, you meet you meet Ed Harris. Um, Ed Harris. <laughs> <laughs> but we find out that Takesis can come out of this, but as she enters the realm, she will be weak and she mm. can be slain. So now we were, fi- we were finding out the scope of what Raceland's plan is, yes. and that's to get Takesis to come through the portal, kind of getting her into the realm of Kryn, and as she's passing through, to kill her. Yes. And take yeah. her place. And take her place. And with it, take her head, and with it, it's power. Yes. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and so, yes. um, is this the chapter where we walk upstairs, finally? Uh, that's the next one. Next one. Uh, this, this is the one where... Let's, let's just go right in. Yeah, because this is just yeah. grocery shopping and... Yeah, and he, he does. He gives Kar- Karamon the charm by kissing him. Yeah, and like removes the slave collar. So finally, yeah. get rid of the yeah. slave collar. Yeah, Honestly, little, I little totally a- forgot Alo- that that slave collar. A little Alohomora takes it off of him. Right. right. Um, I mean, we are into chapter five now, and we yes. really haven't moved anywhere. No, we've got we, no, 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 we're still in the. Room. That's that's okay. That is okay. Yeah, this I agree. is very realistic. They're stuck in this tower. Yeah, it's true. but they're not stuck in the tower yeah, they're, because they're all charmed to be able to walk around and do well, whatever they need to do. Chrysania is charmed. Well, there's been tea brewing. <laughs> there are There's some been parts. some sexual tension. Chrysania walked and looked tension. out. A, she looked out a window. Yeah, and yeah. then she came back and ministered a little bit. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> no, it's they. They're really even when he sends Caramon off with the charm. He still sends like yes. one of his lackeys yeah, with him. I agree. I'm sending this part up. No, I agree. Yeah. I don't think uh, I. I was. I'm still on board with this book. I, I think. Yeah. I think it's been really good. Yes. Here, here. So yeah. So chapter five, uh, Caramon. We get a little glimpse of Caramon going out into the city. A little uh, bit. How weird is it that he's walking around with a floating pair of eyeballs? I don't think it follows. I don't, yeah, I, I think it's it doesn't it's, follow it's, it's on the it, no, it, it, it stops at the edge of the grove. Yeah, it's oh, it's okay. the you are free to get through to here, and then mm. it stops when he well he continues. Ooh, and then I'm gonna wait for you. <laughs> I will be here. I will be here waiting for you. Um, <laughs> we do have. Why, 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 why is this the ghost of a boo all of a sudden? <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> we do have kind of a nice tender moment between Raceland while Chrysania is sleeping. LOL, sleep spell. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Raceland bamfs out of the chamber and is attacked by the dwellers in the tower, mm-hmm. and he commands his guardian to tell him who he. Yeah, it's kind of you know the the guardians and of the tower really don't gossip too much, so nobody knows that Raceland is there. Who yeah. the guardian? Who is he? Fistendantilus. So I think we are meant to think right that he yeah. looks like Fistendantilus. To go back to our previous and also uh, well, because they also can also or bamf, well they can bamf into your head and they can yeah. get like I think so so the the, the spirits can read can read your like aura and he's got the Fistendantilus aura. That's why we had the whole flashback earlier. Right, mm-hmm. right. But they're all they're all so hungry they don't even like look for it. You know. Right. They, well, yeah, because he bamps into the room and then there yeah. is there is the drop afterwards right. about. Right. Well, that was dumb. So clarification. He <laughs> I should, like it, through I magic and aura. Ahead. They think he's Fistendantilus, but that's why Chrysania is not like. Oh, well, like, well, you look weird. Like it's mm-hmm. it is Raceland to her. Yeah. And, yeah, the, and the, yeah. And the whole thing. He didn't enter the tower as he was supposed to. Like he does. Right. Right. And, later and, on. Volume one. What I yeah. like is we have a throwback here of kind of the machinations that are going on previous to what will happen in Chronicles, where we learn that Tachesis is in Naraka, you know, or that the temple at Naraka has appeared, and Tachesis is stealing those true dragon mm-hmm. eggs and perverting them into the Draconians, and like you know that whole thing is starting yes. at this yeah. point, which is which was pretty cool. Yep. And so he goes up. He's in the room upstairs, and he pulls the. Like drape away, the tapestry away from the wall or the drape or whatever it is, and and he screams. It's a wall. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I I really I went real uh, Skyrim with this. It was like a shouting wall and writing on it that jumped into him and he passed out. Right. But I'm projecting. So I've read, um, I've read a lot of reviews on this, and there's a lot of people that that uh, knock this as being a weakness of the book, and that Raceland, being as powerful as, as he is, should have known that the portal was gone. I'm not seeing that as being any kind of weakness, because Raceland's been so weak this entire time. He's like... No, and... and he's, is, he's, is that what happens? And, no, and the portal... But see here, the, the portal's portal, not there. The portal, no, 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 yeah, the portal was there yeah. 
The portal was there. It was there a hundred yeah. years ago? It's there in the future. So logically, I, he it thinks should, it yeah. should yeah. be yeah. there now. Exactly. So I don't see really why people are seeing this as a weakness, other than they think he should have sensed it upstairs. I, 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 I could just, see they that. They just moved the Stargate. Yeah. I, I could. <laughs> I could see oh, that. Star- he is. I he is this big, Stargate, powerful yep. wizard. And he just doesn't see what he's supposed to see, and he right. kind of goes like, "Ooh," and passes out. <laughs> but, he swoons. But he I, swoons. But I guess you know, what, what I said. What I said before was that it was like some sort of. Maybe it wasn't just a wall. That's, that's the only thing that made sense in my mind. And maybe my brain is trying to compensate well, for he, the writing. But, but he's had all these plans. He's got everything set no, up to he go. He is throwing a he knows, huge hissy fit right now. He then. knows. Oh. I, yeah. I, but I, he also that, know- that, Claude, what you're saying is going to make a lot of sense when you're done. Okay. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> okay. He's had wow. He's made all these plans. The portal was there in the past. It's there in the future. Yeah. He it should be there now. Yep. He's, he's set. This he's is ready to go. He's ready to go. This is the culmination of this of book of this entire plan of his that he's spent so long putting together. This is the yeah. first part of his plan that's not going according to it. And yeah. then yeah. and then he pulls it aside. He's like the Stargate's supposed to be there and he go and it's not there and it's just Beep. Yeah, it was well, a giant F word. I was going to say, in my <laughs> mind, it, this was the start of a mental break. Where oh, he yeah. just goes, huh, and his brain just goes, want, and his brain just splits. He also, like, he knows where he is. He knows the time that he's in. Yes. Right. He knows that he is very close to the time in history when Fist and Dantalus died, and he's here as Fist and Dantalus. Yes. Right. I, so I feel he's, like oh, this, <laughs> he, needs to, he needs to make his plan work before the actual historic date when Fistadantilus dies because he realizes that if he stays in this timeline without getting without being able to go through the portal right. if he stays in this timeline he's going to die because it's history said Fistadantilus right. died during this time period yep mm-hmm. yep so this is his wrath of khan moment it's just like Fist and Dantalus! <laughs> <laughs> it's got too, it's got too, it's got too many syllables. It's yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not really as good. Um, so, okay, chapter six, uh, Raceland's back to resting. Um, and he had his mental break, and now he's just well, was, But now we're going to get the was, whole I, I, Astonis I, Gillian thing. I, I do want to, sure. in chapter five, there was... He walked into the room and he was noticing things that yeah from when the table oh yes yeah the, yeah, the, yeah the, the, the like the phylactery that wasn't broken and the, right. the, the, yeah. the cloth or the book that wasn't yeah on there's the floor. a beaker there's a beaker sitting beaker. on the table the book right. was on the floor and he's like when I walk in and like two when I walk in two hundred years from now that book was that book that book wasn't on the desk yeah. and that vial yeah, he, wasn't he, broken. Yeah. How he, observant of him. He uh, asks the spirits, are you guys allowed yeah. to touch No, no, that that makes total sense. Like in yeah. this gigantic tower where you're the only one who's touching things. Yeah. Why like, is that all that? Like yeah, I've been up here staring at ye oldy portal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's supposed to be a book on the floor right there. Yeah. That thing's supposed to be yeah. broken. And then we get, Especially the, we get the whole send through of then he looks over and in his hissy fit he broke the beaker and knocked the book right, on the right. floor. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah, that was that was cool. It's it's connecting all the, the time travel right. timey cool. wimey dots. Nice, that's nice. Yes. Yeah. So chapter six. Chapter six, uh Rayson's resting, he orders Chrysania to go see Astinus. Slash is really answer off. Yeah. So she goes to see him and comes back all in the same paragraph. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It is. Um, it is. It's the whole thing where she walks out the door. We get the we get the weird ding or the screen waves for a second, and she's walking back in the door. Yeah. 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 The, that was yeah. weird. It was weird. On yeah, the bottom you know, okay. on the bottom of the screen, it's like sixteen I'm, hours later. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is this is again the part that I don't I don't like. Even in the annotations, it says uh, it is important to pay attention to the pace. All stories have a meter to them, a pacing to the events as the story is told. No, it's important to write with a good pace. Yeah, this tempo Jeez. and the varying of the tempo are very important to the flow of the story as it all unfolds. And pretty much, uh, it's Wait, Tracy it? going on and on about how how. You know, my writing is, is so superior. It, but it, it is true that you don't need to see Chris Anya no. go to do this, but you need a paragraph break or something to indicate that that happens. Well, I have almost never read an author uh, that that does huge jumps in time. This is the second time only in this series, so it's not a huge infraction. But it's just irritating when they actually underline it as an annotation of the brilliance of pacing when I feel this is some of the sloppiest pacing points that they do well, is when they jump huge gaps of time within a paragraph without any pa- without and any so break. Far, and, and so nothing, far... Nothing happened for the next 16 hours. Yeah. 
And yeah. so far, all we have been doing is sitting in the tower, except for that little bit when Correct. Caramon goes. And then the one chance that they have kind of to go beyond Get out that, of the tower, it's uh, not even a paragraph. Maybe it's they want to go for that claustrophobic feeling. And okay. they're succeeding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have enough money in the play to make the set for the next scene, so we're just going to say the next scene happened off stage somewhere. <laughs> that was funny. Um, like that. Yeah, the people <laughs> behind the curtain yelling about it quick. And yes. Just, All right, we're, but, let's but go back. she's going to talk about what happened in there, so we're yes. going to see part of this anyway. We she do says, see it. But. She says that when she approached Asinus, he stopped writing. He erased what he had been writing and no, just crossed, it, crossed it off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he said the portal had been moved from the Tower of High Sorcery, uh, but Asnus will not reveal the location until he pays the price. <laughs> I want you magician to make me something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Make me something pretty. I don't trust these damn. Yeah. I don't trust these damn kids. They keep telling me everything that's going on in the world. <laughs> I want a crystal ball. And here they do the transition correctly. There's yes. a break. There's uh, a break. There's a break. I, want to, I want to watch it on TV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So here we go. And Raceland now is appearing before Astinus to figure out what's going on here. Uh, and Raceland has brought just what he wanted: a television. Yeah, it's basically. <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> the glo globe of present time passing. Have we heard of this at all? It's on Astinus's desk in yes. the Chronicles. Okay, is it? I, I yes. forgot okay. about that. Yes. One. Okay. Yeah, I did not. It, it's that it's like some very specific fan service right. that we're getting here. I think. Okay. So we're know. racing through here to set up the next section here, and what will end up happening is it says the portal is in Zaman, a land controlled by the Mountain Dwarves near Thorbarden, uh, where Fisty will fight in the Great Dwarven War. And that's where Fisty died. In his and all I'm thinking is, here goes the hammer of Karis. <laughs> <laughs> what, something that we're going to give away and not talk about? And, well, <laughs> I, I snuck a little bit forward. You're a, you ain't wrong. <laughs> well, and so so now <clears throat> now we get a road trip. Yeah. Now we right. now now, now finally adventure. finally we get to get out of this we're room of and tower. start moving. Yes. And we're gonna go over the we're we're gonna have a good old road trip over the plains of the golf. <laughs> so we're on to Taz though. We jump yes. from road trip to Taz and I like I've been waiting this pace. I've been wait that's one yes. of the things why I think for me it felt so pl it felt so plotting being stuck in the room is because I still need I don't know what, Taz? We're, we're 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 what, halfway through the book right yep. now. At, or halfway through, through the, the, the book, book one, one. Yeah, volume, oh, two. volume two. Jeez. And we have it. And and Taz. Last we heard about Taz, about Taz, what is the fact that he was at the end of this first book? We yes. haven't heard anything about him, and I'm like, what happened? So is he dead? Is he alive? What's going on? Right? Um, no, I like the mystery. I like not knowing where Taz was out in the world. Somewhere on Kryn, he was either a pile of bones or he was annoying Tico with these fake stories well, and loading his pockets full of china and nice silverware. Uh, I, I have Perhaps a couple of spicy potatoes. Margaret Weiss yes. says, uh, We deliberately build up the suspense, letting the reader wonder if Tasselhoff is dead through six chapters, then introduce him in chapter seven with the phrase, I'm dead. <laughs> Which he says aloud, indicating that of course he's very much alive. But you know, you know that, what? That if you're gonna, thing to if say. you're gonna let yes. me wonder well, if he's dead, dead or not, don't put him on the cover. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's true. See, my book and on the cover with Caramon. Yes, in the new one, so you know that he ends up even coming into the time stream with Caramon. Yes. So uh, you know, yeah, that kind of ruins the whole. Yes. So we figure out he's wandering around. I'm dead. This is what death is like. This is weird. This is boring. I don't like this. Yeah, I'm boring. I didn't think death would be. Wait, but 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 I'm stuck uh, where I died. Fisman told me that I'd see that 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 I'd see uh, Flint when I died, and I don't see Flint anywhere. And and this is it's all gray. The sky is the same color as the ground, and there's nothing here, and there's nothing around, and I'm kind of thirsty, but I'm gonna keep walking, and there's nothing really. Wait, wait a here. minute! They put me on the floor. They didn't even put me up on a table. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I'm buried. What's going on? I really love this. It and I, I love the annotations here. I just got to read this because this is a great story. I, because it does kind of show Margaret and Tracy talked a lot of things out, but not everything. And so it says, Margaret, or Tracy says, I was sitting in my home office one day when I got a call from Margaret. She had just finished the first book of Legends and was working on the manuscript for the second book. What are we going to do? She said, I think I just killed Tasselhoff. Uh, what do you mean? I asked. Well, he was standing right under the fiery mountain, falling out of the sky at the end of the last book. Huh. Uh-huh, I said. Uh, he but was in, in the force bubble. He was in the middle of Istar at the moment of the cataclysm. Uh-huh. But we need him for later on in the books. Uh-huh. No problem. I know what happens. What? 
He dies. What? Yeah, he dies, I said. But let me tell you what happens after he dies. <laughs> Um, and again, just that. Which makes me look like, I kind of hate this, because sometimes through these annotations, it makes it seem like Margaret is there, like, furiously, like, writing these books and yeah. doing all the work, and Tracy's sitting in some, like, in a velour jacket. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it's a cotton Walmart. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it is. Sitting back like, oh, you don't know what happened to Tasselhoff. Let me well, go, let, me, let me tell let you. Let me go to my cons- my conspiracy board from It's yeah. Always Sunny my in Philadelphia. Butcher, oh, yeah. My, my oh, yeah. butcher paper. Conspiracy board. This Wait, why, one goes here. Why, this one crosses paths here. Why would you let... Connected man. If, if I was in charge of what was going in for, like, annotations, I would not let that be put in that there. That story put in there? Yeah. Hey, you, it hey shows, Margaret, like, remember that one time, like, we talked on the phone and I was kind of a douche? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, and it kind of ruined book two, but I... <laughs> Let's just solidify and put in the annotations. I know you've been, you've been working I let you, so hard. I let you just kill Tasselhoff. You've you been working even know why so you hard, it. and you care so much about your characters. <laughs> and really, the Dragonlance books are probably as good as they are because of you, Margaret. Right. I, I kind of lo- I'm loving... Loving Margaret and kind of ambivalent towards yeah. Tracy at yeah. this moment. Maybe I'm totally wrong, but this is only coming from reading the book and the annotations. So who knows? We're misjudging. We shouldn't misjudge. Whatever. I mean, that's kind of what we do. It's what we do. Is Tracy's okay. a tall <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, Tass, Tass thinks, though, hey, where's Flint? I, I should be meeting Flint under a tree, just like in Dragons of Spring yeah. Dying, yeah. right? It's dark in here. I'm going to light a match. But <laughs> but under the tree is... Eric. Oh, wait. We're not there yet. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. But, okay, so we, cl- we climb out of the rubble, and yeah. then he's wandering around. He's wandering around limbo, essentially, for a while. Yeah, yeah. I picture it as, like, real 8-bit. Like, it looks real 8-bit yes. in my head. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a, like, it's kind of like a weird pre of Tron. Like, like it's, just, it's just kind of a, uh, what is it, kind of a reddish-orange color. I think the entire thing is like horizon, ground to horizon. It's all reddish. I thought orange. it was just gray. Yeah, uh, yeah. I <coughs> picture no, it's no, in the smoke. book. In the book, I, don't think so. I think no. it says that it's colored. The, you know, I thought in the book it was just a gray. Yeah, like I everything like was sm- like smoky a different, black. Yeah, yeah. A different um, version of gray. I thought it was the landscape was certainly like nothing he had ever seen before in his life. It was flat and barren, stretching on and on in a vast empty sky that was lit with a strange glow, as if the sun had just set or a fire burned in the distance. Oh. So I took everything mm. as being sunset orange. I guess I don't know. Okay. It, it, including the ground. Including the ground. Yeah. Like it's all he's like, in the desert, he's wandering around, and then all of a sudden he bumps into an elf. Exactly. Like yeah. He, yeah he, bu- he bumps into an elf and the elf looks at him and goes, You're not supposed to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you here? Yeah. And tangerine Which, dream music is full. Yes. <laughs> Which, yes, this is yes. I feel like as Taz, he's very used to hearing you're not supposed to be here. He's just kinda like yeah. what? This I'm is dead. this is Taz's version of fear and loathing in there Las you go. Vegas. Yes. <laughs> just out in the desert, stuff's going on. So there he's we walking were, through limbo. We were, we, were 50, we were 50 miles outside of the abyss, and that's when the drunks kicked in. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> and then just the dark, just this dark elf shows up. He's like, you're not supposed to be here. We call them drow. Yeah, and who is the dar- this elf? I mean, we meet under the tree. Is Iraq, is who, right? That's what no, we're talking about. Ar- yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 From oh, okay. the Temple of Istar. Is- yeah, but then he disappears and turns into the elf. Yeah, then, yeah. And who cares about him? He actually serves no yeah, I, I, was, I, I don't even have that written down. Okay. Because yeah. it doesn't serve a purpose. He's just like, bah, attacks him. It's like a jump scare. I it's think, like done as a weird otherworldly jump scare. Like, I think it's Flint. Ah, it's a rock. And then, and then, I just, and then he disappears. Yeah. And then I, just like, took, I, I just took it as some weird yeah. like hallucination. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's well, done. The Dark Elf shows up. Dark Elf actually brings him before Takesis. Yeah, very I cool. I do have one question here. Is the Dark Elf the first one to use the portals? That's what I thought of. It was, oh. was that the Dark Elf was the first one to Good use catch. the per- portals, and he's stuck there as the servant. He's now there. I yeah, believe he's, book he, 158. He's the, bu- uh, he's the butler. <laughs> yeah, he's the butler. He's the guy that, well, crap, I well, went through the portal. He is skeletal. Um, he is described as being love, skeletal. I love yeah. this description of Tarkesis. Oh, yeah. Just, oh. just, the, just the lady just... 
mm-hmm. divinely sitting mm-hmm. in the chair. Very the, the version of Dekesis we got to see in the Dragonlance movie, yes. Yeah. Or in the comic books, which we are currently reviewing on hey, our Facebook Hey, if you page. have not actually <laughs> liked our Facebook page, if, even if you just follow our, our Facebook page, sending us a like would go so far. You can uh, you can see some voluptuous artist renderings of Dekesis mm-hmm. if you look through the pictures on Ooh, our Facebook page. But that's that's one of the things that that's one of the things that even Taz says is she's not the five headed dragon. She's not the the sultry dark lady. Mm-hmm. She's just. Like, it's just Helen Mirren in a chair. And what I love about it is she does what every bad guy does. Yeah, just tells her whole plan. Like, I'm just... Well, and it's, well but she I also gets Raceland's plan. Yes, tell me your story. It's, yeah. it's one of those right. where it's like, tell me your story and then I'm going to mess with it. Right. But I think it's what I really like is, again, we're setting up the hubris of the gods in, in a way. I mean, it, Raceland is just a mere mortal trying to yeah. uh, challenge the gods. And she's like, yeah, here's my plan. I even know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, which I think is is really good. Um, it is. It's super good to, you know, and she even calls back like, well, this is what happened, but this is what will happen. Yes. You know, I, I will not fall in Naraka. And I'll essentially Raceland. erase everything that happened in Chronicles. Yeah. Raceland will die. Yeah. Gold Moon will never will never find the discs of Mishakal. <sighs> you are all screwed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because Mormonism will never be started. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I do. I do like it, it. It really does play with because the, now, now we're allowed to change time. Yeah. Now, yes. now, now, now we are allowed to go into the alternate timeline where Biff right. used the sports almanac oh to bet on <laughs> bet on races and sports games. What I feel is this is almost a fight between Fist and Dantalus. It's like Raceland is playing the Fist and Dantalus game on a higher level. Like, he used trickery and subterfuge and Fist and Dantalus' own hubris against him. Correct. He's doing the same thing with... It worked the first time. Like, Takis is like, I know what he's doing. And, yeah. and, and Raislin knows, I think, she knows... He knows what she knows. <laughs> and does she to, know that he knows yeah, that she And knows it's going to use that against her when the time yes. comes, right? So, on to Chapter 8, the dark... Hey, I, I, I do... Ooh. the. I like the... I mean, we... There's all this time travel going on, but we're not really getting the t- like the timey wimey stuff that I really like from the first book. But yeah. this, this here, this is like this whole trippy how... Taz and Taz and Limbo. Is I don't know, no, no, no. It's, it's the it's uh, Takisa's describing just removing Raceland from that equation. Yeah, ruins all of it. Like yeah. that, that whole butterfly effect yes. of. Yep, and then Taz has the realization too of, oh crap, I just killed the world again. <laughs> yeah, 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 he is screwing uh, everything up, yeah. which I, I love. Me and Taz. So so far, I want to make it strong uh, right right here that this first book for me is really strong. Yes, like everything that's happening in this. I know I've said stuff about pacing issues, but I'm magnifying those. Mm-hmm. Uh, this whole first part has been for me without a lot of problems. This has been. I have strong. I have no, and I'm, I'm going to bring up Luke's perspective again. Hey, what's Luke's perspective? Luke's perspective. Um, so I don't believe it. you you had pacing issues. It's wrong. A little bit, yeah. I'm a tulpa. Um, Luke's... I know what a tulpa is. You can't just know throw the word tulpa around nil- willy-nilly. You can't do this. I know. Yes. It summons them. Yes, I can. <laughs> you um, like, like, get another phone call now, Luke. <laughs> I hope so. I hope they'll show up. I hope they'll drink the bleach under my sink. Um, it's in the basement. Okay, come on there, big boy. What's your idea? <laughs> yeah, what's going on here? So Luke's perspective here. Um, I, I started reading this book this week. Yes. We're, we're, we are recording this on a Thursday. Right. And I have no pacing issues with this. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just, I, I hi, I'm a Raceland fanboy. I really like hanging out with him. Yeah, I really like knowing what's going be... on with him. But right. I just, it, it's so very in the moment with what is going on with him and with Karamon, with Chrysania. Even when we jump to Tasselhoff. I, you know, that's not really where I wanted it to go. I really like Klob's idea from the last episode where he was trapped in the bubble in Istar and aged 100 years and was all crazy. Right, (laughs) right. Yeah. But I have no um, pacing issues here. I, uh, Once I really, we get back to Taz, I don't. I just didn't like as much t- how much time we were spending in the dark room in the I did. house. Yes. I liked it. I, uh, I really well, like. You're, but like you said, you're the black magic guy. And I am. Wanted, like, I am what's sure. the thing on the wall and what does that do? I don't yeah, care. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of agree with that. I want to know how to do black magic in real life. But again, I like Taz. That explains the fingernails. For those of you who like to get into every nuance of Dragonlands, I like the yes. stuff that happens behind the scenes. So again, an annotation. Taz and what his version of hell would be. 
uh, which I kind of like. Mm. Uh, Tracy <laughs> says, uh, I remember watching a TV show called Amazing Stories. Uh, I in, loved Amazing Stories. Uh, I, and it's funny, I have seen two episodes of Amazing Stories, and the one he references is one of the ones I've oh my seen. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Which is really weird. And it was actually really good. If you're, I mean, it's 70s and kind of weird. But, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it says, I think it was, in which a man finds himself in hell. It turns out to be a granny-decorated living room with a middle-aged couple showing an eternal and endless progression of bad slides from their vacation. Oh, my the, God. the man complained to <laughs> Satan, who explained that for the man's soul, this was hell. The funny thing is, Satan says as he is leaving, there's another room just like this one in heaven. The idea intrigued me that every man's heaven or hell is unique. Face it, Tasselhoff would probably find fire and brimstone to be pretty amazing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So we tried to picture what real hell would be like for a kender. We believed it would be essentially one long eternal timeout. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yo, exactly. And that, that's exactly the way that I read this. Yeah. That is, is great. Yeah, idea. I love we're, it. I we're, like it. we're in the never ending boring desert. Everything's mm -hmm. one color, and Tasselhoff is just going to go ungodly insane. Yeah. Never ending There's story. nothing to do. There's nothing yeah. to see. There's nothing to steal. Yeah, nothing. There's nothing. It's awful. Just I boredom. Agree. And this is also. In his hell, this is where he meets his gnome friend. Yeah, right? well, yes, because he's basically told by Takesis that yeah, you're stuck here. Yeah, you're stuck here too. So the elf dude, the elf dude brings him to another part of nothing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and says, yeah, this is your part of nothing. We have, we, we have other stuff to do. Here's your part of nothing. You can't escape from your part of nothing. Good but luck. you get, but if you want to think up something, you can think up something. So he yeah. thinks of a bed and a stool. I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so he's just sitting there on the bed. He's sitting there on the bed in the stool, and he's like, "This is." But wait, wait, wait! I have a couple questions. I, and the elf just bamps out of there, and he's like, yeah. uh, "But uh, oh, Nimish, this sucks." Nimsh, yeah, Nimsh or Gnimsh, 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 whatever. Oh, Nimsh. And the gnome walks up. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm like thinking this. of uh, what? What is that from? It's from something else. The, the Nimish stone. Or the Nimish hat, that's a Legend of Zelda game. Oh, yes. There we go. yes, it is. <laughs> but in the that, in I, chapter I, I, I eight, it. we get a few pieces of information yes. here. The Dark Cleric tells Tass that he, he has been healed and will sit around until he dies. Yeah. So we get this time ticking yes. kind of. Well, again, but, I like that. And it's, it, it, it's not like you're going to die of starvation. It's this place, you're, yeah. you're actually alive, and so this place is going to kill you because kill you. the dark yeah. energy sucks right. stuff out of you. Just very yeah. slowly. But Sucks we got you dry. But we got Gnimsh or whatever that shows up and he has this weird like fight with a recliner. <laughs> yeah, I think this was a good that, description that's just... of what Okay, so Luke, what did you think about it? Because I feel like you're not liking it. What did you think, Paul? Because you kind of are seeming I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm okay with this because it's hell. It's this is a guy that this uh, So it's out of time, you can have a recliner, because it's weird it's a recliner. Well, it, it was one well, of his father's inventions. It was inventions one of his father's inventions. Work. Yeah, that's right. what he said. And it's one of those where... And this is Hickman's at some point going, you know what would be funny, a lazy boy. I yeah. got, okay. <laughs> yeah. I got where this came oh, from. Oh, gosh. Okay. I, know, I know, he's just, in my head, he's just a gnome. Gnomes are just kind of goofy. Yeah. Next, next on the reading of I mean, the... Reading of, it, reading of the it. entire, of every annotation I mean, in the annotation. We've skipped remember, a lot of annotations. No, that's, if you remember, I, I feel like, what was the uh, mountain full of gnomes in that one book? Oh, God, yes, oh, with, yeah. the, with, I, the, with, the, with the with the catapult. I, I hated all of that, didn't I? Yeah, I you yes, did. You did not like See, it. Except for yeah. all of their things kind of worked. Uh, that, no, that's why he was. Ba that's why this dude was banished. Is he was banished because all of his stuff a works a dark perfectly. Gnome. Yeah, <laughs> he's a dark gnome because if it if it if, if your stuff works perfectly, it can't be improved on. Yeah. So therefore, you're setting science back eons because your stuff actually works. Well, what? if you love gnome and their, <laughs> that's you, not science. If you love, it's if gnome you science. love gnomes and their technology, you should see the review of issue number five of Dragonlance Comics oh, on, on our Facebook page right now. Is that? Uh, is that? What, uh, sorry to timestamp this, but did, is that what you just posted? Today? No, 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 no. We're already up to. I think uh, as of the time of this recording, eight. We're on eight. Yeah, you're right. No, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, where did the gnome? Rec where, where did the gnome? Basically, the, I'm not the gonna, lazy I'm, gnome. Come I'm not going to re read it verbatim. Him, but Margaret, uh, when she was living in Wisconsin, had Tracy come and help her move. Um, Tracy got into a fight with a recliner, no, didn't he? No, I don't know why it's a recliner. She, he jumped. It says um, he he got into she he climbed into her cheap car and it was falling apart, and the whole seat he climbed into fell backwards, and he found himself staring up at the ceiling. And so she homaged okay. that in the book by. That's the car you want to have when you're a high school boy. <laughs> yeah. She gets it. She falls right backwards. 
I would like to uh, <laughs> not get too far into it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> So, we have this, uh, Taz has the time device in his pouches. Well, he's in well, pieces. Okay, it's all in yeah, pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. pieces. And Nimsh is gonna fix this thing. And that's how like, we know, he's super and see, focused. that's how we know, that's why everybody's really confused, and that's why we know he's not really dead dead. Right. Because you can't take it with you, and he's taking it with him. Yeah, so <laughs> how, how, did, how did this time device, or this dimensional device, get there? Was it because Tasselhoff oh. wished it there? Or was it because Tasselhoff had taken it at some point? Did well, he, yeah, is, he, well, had, he had. He because, had. Because at this point, I'm in my abridged version of the audio. Okay. Book. Because when he woke up in the still in the temple, mm-hmm. he's like he felt around and he still had all his pouches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before yeah. he climbed that's on, why they're all in the That's pouches. why I kind of thought it was just something that he picked yeah. up. No, nope. yeah, no, no. no, because it it's is. still all in pieces. Sorry, I want to. And that's why we need the gnome is to put it back together. I don't think this is the device. I thought this was the gnome's device. No, I thought it was the gnome mm. that had it because the gnome was saying, "Well, this crystal goes here. This crystal goes here. This one goes there. This." And then, I thought it was. I thought no, it was no, the it's it, no. This is the this thing. is the time. This is the yes. the time and the dimension device. Oh, that, yeah. that, the that Parsalian. That Parsalian. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, it is. Because he he sets Nimsh to like fixing it. Like, hey, I, this is oh, what I have. Oh, yeah, no, I I, no, I'm with you. I thought, I thought it was, was the gnome's device because the gnome was saying how he got there with yeah with the dimension device, but. Then all of a sudden, so I thought it was just the gnome's dimension. No, device. no, this so, is this is the par- this is the device that was oh, given yeah. to Caramon so, by so, yeah, Parsalian. Yeah. In, in, okay. in, in my brain, I thought this gnome invented this device, transported himself to the abyss, right, and. Tasselhoff had found it at some point and stole it. Yes. No, 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 the, no, no, no. And then wow. he's describing it. Tasselhoff so. goes, "I'm like, the one who's actually right about something." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, uh, you've been very right this episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. this episode, yeah. But yeah. no, no, this is <laughs> this episode. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be specific. This episode. <laughs> Thank you. You're because welcome. the gnome, Somebody he's a misinformation. Yeah. The gnome yeah. transported. He's, he's the false book media guy. <laughs> the gnome transported him. I, I just took it that the gnome transported himself to the abyss. Like, basically, he built the door, opened the door, walked through, went, oh, I, and the door closes behind him and disappears. And so he's Plot trapped twist. Here. He is the wizard in the tower who built the door to the oh, abyss. Oh, you're blowing oh. my mind. Okay, yeah, I'm going. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, but no, so he, that's that's what he does is he takes this, this is the gearhead guy. This is the gearhead yeah. guy. So Tasselhoff takes all the parts that he has right. in his pouches, lays them out on the bed, yeah. and the guy can't. Yeah. And the, he's a gnome, so he what do I do resist. with this carburetor? And he's yeah, like, I'll fix a carburetor. I'm gonna be. Honest, this makes it makes <laughs> just in, so just in Super th- Mario overalls. <laughs> <laughs> this makes it make so much more sense to me because I was sitting there going, well, "What's the gnome, going on? Why didn't the gnome oh, just okay. leave?" This makes it make, make so much more sense. Yeah, no, I was kind of well because I'd be go- been going between the abridged. Um, audiobook and the actual book to take notes. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought at some point I had read, well, okay, so to get anywhere in the abyss, you just have to, like, think yourself there. Yes. Mm-hmm. But there's nowhere to go. And I like, well, no, I, I like that, like, if, if I see you over there, I, I can't just walk to you. I have to think myself. Yes. Over. Right, right, right. So what I thought was either Nimch yeah. or Tasselhoff had thought this device into existence. No. No, Tasselhoff yeah, brought this with him. Yeah, that's yeah. What I it's, in, it it's in the pouch. Yeah, it's and, in and, and or okay. <laughs> and or Tasselhoff had stolen it in real life, and now it's in the abyss with him, and it's no. actually yep. nope. device. No, nope. no, nope. this is the him. parts of the Parsalian this, device. Okay, honestly, this cleared that just cleared up an issue. Actually, which which, which have after which after the descriptions, I always kind of imagine now as like an old pocket watch. Yeah, yeah. With all, with all the gears and all the little crystal pieces and everything else, and Taz has no idea how to put this together. But thank God we, thank God he bumped into the tinkerer. Yeah, right. Exactly. No ex machina. So we we go we leave what I actually found was an entertaining piece. Uh, yes. This other world. We go back to race Caramon and Chris on their road trip. On the uh, road again. again. <laughs> Just can't wait to get on, on the, the road, road again. again. The life I love is crossing the plains of Deergoth with my friends. Uh, I sorry, <laughs> crossing the plains of Dergoth. Um, and this is where they stop at this shabby old rundown inn. And this is where Raceland does his old, fix me my drink, woman. Yeah. Uh, yes. Fix kind of me my drink. <laughs> yes. And I, I like the little drop because they talk. And it's just the ratty old. This guy is sh- this guy is shadier than shit. Oh, yeah. From the, oh, yes, from yes, the yes, very absolutely. beginning. You know something's up with this guy. Bring, brings him some slop in a bucket. Yeah, Krasania takes two bites and is like, "I 
can't eat this. Yeah. Whereas we flash over to Caramon and Caramon is, really good, is I'm a sol I'm a soldier and I know I must eat. Right, right. Food it doesn't needed. matter. Yeah. And also I do like the quick drop here of bring wine for them and water because uh, Caramon's on the wagon. Yeah. So bring wine for what wine for them and water for me. Oh, yes. good one. Yeah. All right. He's, he's one of those guys. He's gonna tell every. He should be telling everybody about it. Hey, uh, hey, I'm vegan. Hey, a <laughs> hundred and fifty three days sober. Are you are you a <laughs> are you a friend of Bill's? <laughs> that's actually that's actually the yes. AA code. Yes, there is. Yes. Oh really? Yeah, because oh, really? yeah. yeah. okay. oh, it was started by a guy named Bill, and so if you're talking to another alcoholic, are you? A, are you a friend of Bill? And that's how you know that because it's supposed to be anonymous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, now you've just spoiled it. <laughs> no longer <laughs> anonymous. It's not everybody, really a everybody secret. Everybody knows that. <laughs> I didn't I know didn't know that. that. Well, half the Dungeons and Dweebs tale. Fifty <laughs> percent. All right, but okay. So let's not dwell on it. This was a very obvious ambush. Yes, they uh, leave the inn ambush. We got robbers dropping. Oh yeah, they the leave. Trees. They leave. He grabs a. He grabs a. Yeah. yeah. He gra they're going down the road. He grabs the other skinny servant or whatever. And is like, hey, go tell the guys down yeah. the road they're coming. S Salanthus Road is what it's called. They're the trail of the Salanthus Road. <laughs> right. No, yeah. They're headed south. Yeah. So, um, this is supposed to underline the lawlessness that followed the cataclysm. Is yeah. what well, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Everything is just uh, falling apart, social, social mm -hmm. speaking. Uh, the leader is a huge half-ogre named Steeltoe. And this is very, this is very like... And he has a peg leg or something? Like Robin yeah. Hood. This is very yeah. like Robin Hood. Like they, they, Robin Hood or any of these like old movies where they're talking about medieval times and the bandit, you know, bandits pop out of the trees. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, it, it is also a reference. This is a little, there's a little Chaucer in here. Because mm. this is, this is, we're on the pilgrimage um, when they, through the Canterbury Tales, that's why everybody went together and not in small groups because literally bandits would drop out of the trees and rob you on the way to Canterbury oh, if you weren't okay. in a large group. Oh. Good catch, good catch. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I like it. Uh, things get dark here. Oh God, yeah. Oh yeah, like, way get, darker they, than what's been in. They this. did not hide anything. It just got real rapey. Like, like <laughs> I, I was gonna say, he got, that's they, what's they in my notes. It got yeah. real rapey. Yeah, like they, he comes up and he's blatantly just sexually assaults Crescania, and I think it's insinuated that he kind of does. He oh, does yeah, on the do. road. He oh, kind of rapes he, her, right? Does he do no, it? no, he doesn't rape he doesn't her. Rape not right he, there. He, he, no, he's saving her for later. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's it's yeah. he, he yeah. never actually he, he never said. actually oh, okay. he never actually gets the chance to rape oh, because okay. because <laughs> 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 I'm putting my foot down right here. Never did he get the chance to rape. <laughs> no, because well, I felt there was that time he rapes her. The whole story goes to hell. Yeah, because because she has to be a virgin. Yeah, because she has to she has to still be pure and. He, he just he just gets really rapey and he like, like feels her up. I real like it, everything gets uncomfortable. I like, like I think at the end of the third book that should have been a thing. Like I'm here and I've got my virgin and ah, and then it doesn't work and she's like, well, I remember Steel Toe. <laughs> <laughs> and it ends on that note. But just a relationship. Wow. But yeah, so fumble. he's so he's wow. fe he's feeling her up. Raceland keeps he keeps knocking out or they keep knocking out Raceland so he can't do anything but they also can't kill Raceland because they're like we're not going to kill a mage because we kill a mage and the other mages are going to come right. after us well, yeah. so we're going to take him up the hill blindfolded if he falls off the hill blindfolded that's not our fault <laughs> yeah, they, not they, they, they know that like the dark mages cause that curt can cause curses yep. and things and they're just like eh, and Caramon's going to be Caramon's going to be entertain dinner entertainment when we kill him tonight yeah right so they go back to camp we they go find, back to, we yeah, find out he he's throws got, her on the horse they get back we to find camp. out he's got Chapter a Ten. We find out he's got a metal leg. Yeah, Steel Toe's got a metal <laughs> leg. Hence so the he's name Steel Toe. Hence the name Steel Toe. <laughs> Ooh. And, and I never, but, <laughs> I but it's it. not. It's not as cool as the one blacksmith's, you know. Yeah, metal, metal arm. arm. Yeah. No, this is. I just have this picture of like just. Like the la just like a metal pipe stuck into a stump. Okay, yeah. you know what? I didn't even think about it until you just said that right now. I'm like, they're like, oh yeah, second book. We should have some guy with a metal appendage. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh, they're trying to have a oh, metal leg. Let's have it a metal but, leg. This but again, it's, 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 it's a peg. Yeah. It's not a leg. It's yeah, just, it's, it's a pipe and a stump. Actually, it would go the other way. Margaret Margaret would be furiously calling Tracy back in his plush office. Um, I'm at the part with the guy. Uh, what should I have him? Like something weird? Something about his body? Yeah, he's, he's, he's like, he's, well, he's, he's the orchestra leader. Yeah. It's like, um, well, small-minded woman. It's, <laughs> it's. 
It's obvious that it would be a metal leg. It, it, a it, metal it, it, har- leg. it harkens back to, to what we did in the first trilogy. Uh, but of course. <laughs> but yeah, so he's got a peg that he keeps knocking Raceland in the head with. Um, but yeah, they keep Raceland. He th- fights with this peg leg. I know. I yeah. love it. I, they keep Raceland passed out. He's got her tied to a chair as they're eating dinner, and he keeps like reaching over and like grabbing her breast and like licking say, her face and I, stuff. I, I, I really. Just, this is going to sound really disgusting, just, but I'm going to have fun with you later. Yeah. This is going to sound disgusting, but I really like this part because this this is the kind of stuff that happens. Like I'm a big Conan fan, and this is like the the trope of every Conan novel is this is what happens. You've got the leader of the outlaw band. He's all weird and rapey. And then you got Conan who steps in, fights him, and with his bare hands, snaps his neck, crushes his head, whatever. Oh, this is... And, and the women are always draped all over the place. This you is, know, this this is, is just, totally... Yeah. This, I, I'm surprised you went with Conan because this is totally Jabba and Leia. Oh, there's that as well. <laughs> Which Margaret Weiss, that's her favorite movie, Return of the Jedi. So, I don't know, probably. Yeah. Th- this is the, he's a big slug. He'll lick in her face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. DP yeah. Jedi. <laughs> DP Jedi. DP Jedi. And so, we get. <laughs> no. We, 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 we get Racelet and Caramon doing their twins talk again. Their, yeah. their little their little half telepathy that they have because they're twins. They set it up. Caramon challenges the guy to a fight. Yeah, because it's. We're, we're said that. Uh, I love it because Chrysanius is sitting there praying to Paladine, and then you got Raceland praying to, to Kesis, but Caramon, finally, this is something he can do. Yeah. Yes. Like, this is Caramon's going, I can all I have is something. All I have is muscle. Krom only wants one thing. And there is the one, there is the one comment I do want to bring up here, too, when they're getting all rapey, is he makes the comment about, and we'll all share the spoils of war, boys, but I'm going first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And everybody's excited about it. <laughs> Except, but no, but Caramon. Caramon I love going. Fifth. <laughs> I love going fifth. Thirty fifth. Yeah. Uh, but Caramon. But this is how Caramon knows he's got a shot because he sees some of these guys. First off, he's re- he recognized some of the armor. A shot at what? A shot at what? I can get it on item number six. No, at least right? six. Some of these guys, he actually yeah. hears. He's like, uh, what? What is the one? The one dude makes a comment about. I'm not having sex with a witch. I'd rather. <laughs> I'd rather boink the wizard. <laughs> he actually makes that yeah. comment in there. They, Whoa! They, this is that's where true. Caramon does see, just like you're trying to put the, the you were saying, where it's he sees there's some dissension that some of these guys are just there because they, they literally have to be. had no. And he else starts to be. and he starts recognizing pieces of armor and swords yeah. at, as, yeah. as 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 Sturm's Knights of Solace guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. he, he gives him it that, gives that, him a that chance. Was over that was skipped in that yeah. Was that, that all the cool that? stuff? No, he yeah. because this is at, because remember the Knights of Solace were partial. Some Slamnia. people Slamnia, sorry, Slamnia. Yeah. Slamnia were blamed for the catechism, yes. so a bunch yes. of them had to go into hiding. Right. And, yeah, so these their families some of the, were getting like killed. Yeah, yeah, some of these guys are just here to try to survive. Yeah, cripple fight. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Stealing. Oh my god. <laughs> so, okay, now he's gone from a half ogre, half o- huge half over with a peg leg. Now he's gone to Jimmy from South Park in my head. I love the fact that Caramon steps steps into the circle. He's like, I challenge you. To, I, 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 you're not mad enough to take me on one by one. And so our half ogre dude steps, steel toe steps up, and he's like, I'll take you. Yeah, I gotta prove to my men that you know I'm. I should still be the leader here by force. So what does Caravan do? All right, let's go. Strips down naked. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> he just gets bucked. Which naked. is exactly what you should do to throw off an enemy. Yeah. Because that is the first thing you should well, do. Because clothes can get in the way of a street fight. Yeah, yeah. Imagine, so, okay, so imagine a guy comes up to you in an alleyway with a gun and says, "Give me your wallet. You take everything off." <laughs> <laughs> that guy's not going to be able to look to take your wallet. Um, you're standing there just butt naked. Young, youngling's a pointer from your uncle club. <laughs> if you're ever getting into a one-on-one fight with a big, bad, baddie guy, strip naked and see if he'll fight you then. <laughs> That's exactly what you should be Are doing. Are you speaking from experience? Yeah, so, this, yeah, this yeah, is like, I mean, you, you went to Vegas. Did you, 
So, uh, is this the Vegas story? So this there? this fight happens, and I well, I love the half ogre strips down too, and it talks about like seeing the scars in different places on oh, the yeah. half ogre, and you can see the metal peg that's in the stump. But which, oh. by the way, because it's a Dungeons and Dragons connected thing, and there's modules that go with this. There's an entire backstory to this guy if you want to look it up. So of it's, it's in the annotations. Of course, of and actually, he's a cool guy to have a backstory. He's for. a very cool because somebody and, might want to play actually, him. Or outside have him outside of the guy. fighting ring and the rape, he actually is a cool guy. <laughs> Okay, you just got to get to know him. He's an interesting character. Yeah, he's, he's a good... You know, I mean, he's small time. He only c- he only controls like six blocks down by the pier. Hey, like, don't worry If you grow it. up as a half-ogre around humans, then imagine how he was picked on in elementary school. <laughs> it's the bullying that made him this I hear, way. I hear he has dinner with his grandma every Sunday. Well, that, well that's really every nice Sunday of him. Every Sunday he has. He's a good every guy. Every Sunday? Not, he's he a does, little he misled, but he's a good guy. Ha- hashtag Thorm's a good guy. <laughs> uh, Let's start that thing. Uh, uh, rapey, but a good guy. Okay, so we get so we have orc. We get the cripple fight. My favorite thing that happens cripple is Caramon. Caramon loses his sword, grabs a log, and pounds the steel peg leg like a I, tent spike into that. the ground. Yes. yes. So you can't move. I love this. It's, that was probably was that not in the edited version? No. Oh, what? Oh, oh, who this, is editing this, this fight? Stuff? Is great. Yeah, did yeah, they? It goes on. on, and on, on, on. It's, it's just like Caramon, Caramon defeats everybody and becomes the leader. Oh, no, no, this what? fight he, goes on for pages. He he, really? he ends it by hammering his peg leg like a tent yeah. spike into the ground yeah, and he, then bashing he, his he, brains he, he, everywhere. He grabs a fire log, oh hits the guy Lord. in the shoulder, hammer hits, continues to hit the guy in the shoulder, hammering the peg leg down into the ground till the guy's trapped. Then he baseball bats him across the face so he falls backwards with like the bed, with like the peg leg still uh, it, in the it ground. It is an awesome And then he life. jumps on him and smashes it, and smashes his face in with the with the log. Yeah, Jeez. it is amazing. I love a, this a Mortal fights. Kombat fatality. Yeah. Yeah. Finish him. This, I love it. From a book that really didn't do combat well for, you, from the series. This was great, and it ta- and it talks about it, it talked about earlier about that he's of course you know the characters like Steel Toe even in the real world always have their little lackeys around him, yeah, their little right. yes men, and he, and Caraman talks about him and he talks about watching them as he's beating the guy's face and then just the look of shock from right, these right. yes men from from the Steel Toe's lackeys of. Right. Oh crap! Uh, but then there's a chance that the lackeys could all gang up and attack him. So Rayson, by this time, is okay. Runs out and protects him with sparkly fingers. Sparkly jazz hands. Jazz, jazz hands. hands. He's oh, like, oh, oh, not my brother. Look at me over here. Your Look fingers? at me over here. Oh, what's on your fingers there? Is that sparkles? <laughs> and and Chrisania runs out, does a little healing, little sexual healing. No, okay, no, well, non-sexual not. healing. Okay, no, yeah. not at all. He- it's, he- it's becoming he- kind of heavy, sexual. heavy petting. It's becoming. It, it heavy is. Petting. Yeah, it's this becoming is, a little is. sexual. But anyway, because she uses some power, she's a witch. Oh, she's Burn her! <laughs> oh, she's a witch, ain't he? <laughs> How do you know she's a witch? <laughs> well, I, she, she turned I, me into a newt. <laughs> I got better. I got better, didn't I? Very small rocks. Um, <laughs> right, eh? <laughs> um, what gosh, happened next, Andy? And so, so Car- Caramon... This got confusing for me because Caramon steps up and she and he goes, yeah, she's a witch, but she's my witch and you're not going to yeah, touch her. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, she's my witch, and not she, she? And Caramon takes up his sword, declares himself the leader, and that oh, they man. will ride to Thor Barden for riches and glory. He is totally... Krom, or... Uh, 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 Conan here. Oh, yes. Amra. He, oh, is, yeah. he is totally oh, Conan yeah. in the Amra days. Yeah, he's totally when he was Mom, leader. Mom Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> I'm all cockney. You know, I'm... <laughs> and the way... Co- what, what listeners can't see is the way you're bobbing your head and looking at me and squinting a you look like eye. You look like you should be wearing a driver's cap with a pint in yeah, your hand. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? <laughs> I look about the same way I sound. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's yeah, pretty so, good. Get it. Get it. Get it. This, is now, this is now Caraman's army. Raceland realizes... Oh crap! Oh, we're going to the war. I'm going to die in. Yeah, right, right. Um, and then I, there's a nice little. There are a couple nice little drops here where Caramon goes to Steel Toe's house, his little his little, his little shed, tent his thing. little shack. Yeah, I picture it as like almost like one of those like card like uh, plywood screen houses that you can like sometimes go and camp in, like almost like a yurt. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, and <laughs> you picture things very oddly. <laughs> I don't think I'd like to go sleep. In Steel Toe's bed. 
No. Did no, you no. change the sheets? No, you I got to change so. the did, sheets. Did you burn everything yeah, that's I, in I there? Because there's a whole lot of raping that happened <laughs> in that house. I think you're thinking yeah, but uh, it was Crin the first. is much it was like more... The, it was the first in line. I don't think Crin's that clean to begin with. <laughs> not at this point. No, not at this point. It's kind of well, kind of kind of gray London, but, if we can call back but to they, there. But they did make a comment no. about how some guys had tents, <laughs> some guys had didn't have tents, but yet Steel Toe had this little like shack in the woods. He Caramon's in Steel Toe's place, right. but like looking out the wind, looking like through the window or through the screen or whatever, <laughs> the bug screen. The bug screen. He yeah. could see Chrisania. No, he could see Chrisania laying, and he starts to feel the stirrings. Lustful thoughts. Oh, yeah, he he starts to feel the stirrings, and then he catches himself, and he goes, "No, Tika, think about well, Tika, yeah. think about Tika." Right. She sleeps in his tent, or is that? Yeah, yeah. You, there, no, that's you're right. Okay, okay, yeah. 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 No, so he's no, he's sitting there going. She's sleeping there, going. Yeah, Rayson's camped out in a chair. She's on like the spare bed. And, and, which and wouldn't, still, the, wouldn't the spare bed be the rape? Be the rapey bed? Wouldn't that be the concubine bed in Steel Toes? She place? still doesn't Probably. have any new clothes, right? Like, isn't she still in kind of the ripped up tatters? Yeah. yeah. Right. That are even like I mean. Raceland sent Caramon into town to get food and stuff. He didn't say, you know, stop, stop well, by. Because Steel Toe ripped and ripped the clothes. So that yeah, was, well, that well, was yeah. the well, thing. Well, while was, she was tied to the chair, that's, he, like, right. he, like, ripped open her, yeah. he, like, ripped it open so he could fondle yeah. her a little bit. But wasn't she still wearing the white blood splatter robe? I think she was robe, probably wearing white, she maybe something white new? but not the same thing. I don't think it was the exact no, same No, because Caramon bought clothes. Yeah, he bought, he bought clothes. So I think it was oh. just white clothes. Because he knew that she wanted. White I thought. Clothes. Why didn't he go into town and stop off at the nearest? What's the What's that clothing that everybody wears? No, the Forever Twenty One. <laughs> <laughs> what's that one wet, that people sell? Seal. The one that people sell at like the parties. The ladies get together. At the Lululemon. Lulu 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 Lululemon. I'm sure. I don't know. It's the same crap. Four guys sitting in a in a room. None of us have any what idea. It, whatever the flowy r- clothes for big women <laughs> is what I like to call them. Oh, what sorry. It, whatever the reason, Caramon <laughs> caught himself watching her that night in a much different way than he had watched her before. Thinking about that even now made his skin burn and his pulse quicken. Oh. At which point is is, is this like the Raceland killing Fistadantilus thing where he kills Steel Toe and now he's getting the rapey thoughts? <laughs> yeah, he, he's absorbed. Steel Toe lives Steel within Toe. him. Plot twist. I think it's power, man. He has become. He is now in charge of the army of. And, and again, Fistadantilus. Well, yeah, 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 and little, again, little spoilers. Uh, the general. The general. Yes. Yeah. General. He, yeah. And again, so he's in power. He can exploit his power. And again, he hasn't been laid in like a year. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> and he's been wearing leather and fighting, and there's a been loincloth and there's golden been armor. Green women next to him. And women uh, have been trying to get his attention. Yeah, the whole rich, time, going, mm. he should be applauded for his chastity. Yes. That's yes. Oh yes. No, he should not he, be applauded for been being very faithful. Yeah, he should not be applauded <laughs> for just being faithful to his marriage. <laughs> what, what's what? What's the thing? It doesn't matter if it's in another zip code. What, what about time period? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that's, it's not gay if it's in a three-way. That's it's, totally it's, different. It's not cheating if you're in a, it's not cheating if you're 200 years in the past. Yeah, exactly. This was way, <laughs> it was way before I met you. Exactly. Technically, Except it's true. Then it turned out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, Tika I'm, is his We weren't even relative. married then. It was in his Some, Somehow, Ooh. Tika becomes his, if, if he. Caramon's yeah. his own yeah. grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he is both Caramon. Caramon the Elder and Caramon the Younger. (laughs) (laughs) Why aren't people talking about this around the old water cooler? It's because he was faithful. That's why. He he, he held off. Well, that wraps her up, boys. That's the end of chapter (laughs) 10. We'd be on to book two. Besides, something tells me that something tells me that Mormon Hickman is not gonna write about. No, not at all. It was, or maybe you could take a second wife. As we come to the end of uh, book one of volume two, um, it had not been a look of anger or irritation as Caramon might have expected. The last thing Caramon saw before sleep erased the memory was Raceland's look of stock, abject terror. Yeah, because Raceland's also looking at her. Yeah, and so yeah. It, yeah. he's like. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, they saw, and they looked into each other's eyes. 
Yeah. It wasn't okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, they were spit roasting. No, I, 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 oh, 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 oh. You know what's right? We're just easing down the band so far. You know what it is? Is because we think by this point in the show, nobody's listening. I, 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 <laughs> listeners, I, I don't know if you've noticed, we get a little bit loosery. We get a loosey goosey by yeah, the end of the loose, show. A little loosey goosey. Yeah. 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 We got a little more ale in us. Yeah, uh, we, we half imbibed. <laughs> um, so that's the end of the book, book one, one of volume, volume two, two of the Dragonlance Legends of trilogy, the second trilogy, the <gasps> War of the Twins. All right, so War of the Twins, book one, is that what we're saying? Yeah. I, I'm lost. Okay, so let, <laughs> again, whenever, again, whenever again. you guys do that, I just... Part one of three of War of the Twins. Okay, so how's everybody feeling real quick before we get out of here? Do we want, not even medium median thoughts, would you like to yeah. give us your uh, first third thoughts? First, first third, third thoughts. thoughts? I'll go first. Uh, good. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It, so far, it's been pretty good. The battle was needed. Um, it was enjoyable to have some conflict. I got a little bored when we were sitting in the same building for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. But I got over that. I liked the fight between uh, Peg Leg, uh, Peg Leg <laughs> Guy and Caravan. Steel Toe. Steel Toe, thank you. I liked that fight. It brought a little bit more action into the book, and I liked how they actually did it. So for this book one, I'm definitely going to give a recommend, a little hint, uh, later on. Uh, Klopp, what about you? Um, I Again, I love time travel. I'm in. I like what's going on here. I like the, how we're building up the characters. I'm confused as heck about what is actually going on inside Raceland's head. Uh, but I like that. Mm-hmm. And I like that aspect of I don't really know what's going on with Raceland because I don't think you really should know what's going on with Raceland. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the I still like the arc that Caraman's on. I don't like this little this little bop at the end of the book that we were talking about where he's you know getting a getting a half chub while looking at uh, <laughs> Chris Chris Anthemum. Sonia. <laughs> But uh, no, I'm in. I'm looking forward to the rest of the book. We'll see where it goes here. I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see how Raceland's going to get himself out of this one because he's supposed to die in the war. Ding 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 ding. ding. Okay. <laughs> and you know, and and how history is actually going to change from the abject pebbles and the boulders that we keep rolling into this stream. I want to know how Taz is going to get back to this group. I like the idea of putting him in the abyss because. <laughs> I think the abyss. I think that's ab- really good. That is. That was really good. I think the abyss is really going to be. Kind of, it's it's going to be an ex machina. It's going to be a catch all. It's going to be something like, well, there's no time in the abyss, so we can shoot you out at any point in time that we want. <laughs> I'm, I know that's going to happen. Right. Uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you were just full of noises today, Bob. Weren't you? you just really. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, kids, I'm really into this. Hey, let's find out what Luke has to say. <laughs> I was going there! <laughs> Clob, I want you to introduce me. <laughs> Cuke. <laughs> it's QK. 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 Luke got a name tag at work that said Cuke on it. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was very good. Yeah. Um, Luke. You know, one typo haunts you. <laughs> For over a year now. <laughs> so yeah, how much you true. or do you just kind of enjoy it? Oh, I love it. I'm wearing, I'm wearing that ID badge that. for the rest of my life. Wasn't your last name misspelled too? Nope. Oh, okay. Nope. Nope. My four letter first name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good to be needed. Uh, uh, loved. No, good to know that boss really, <laughs> really knows who you are. So. Actually, you know what? I, I really, I did enjoy this book, even if, you know, if we're going to, if I'm going to keep hammering home the importance of perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was rushed. I was, you know, and, it, and honestly, it, it was my own fault. I'm going to sit here and admit that. But we do have some very nice YouTube videos out now. Um, all of our intros from <laughs> the Red Rising trilogy are up now. You should, by the time this goes out, be able to see our intro for the Time Machine. and or the Yes, the Time Machine. Mm-hmm. I wasn't called the Time Traveler. There's something wrong with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Time Machine and the Do an- Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, where I do a very good Russian accent. It's yeah. actually a very good Russian accent. I don't know what to talk about it. Um, so, a little rushed. Um, very thick chapters in this book. 
Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm going to be honest, yes, slow stuff, but slow, interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. It's the kind of fantasy I want to read about. Um, you know, we got magic, we've got mystery, um, even intrigue, intrigue, rape. <laughs> <laughs> Bob said that. <laughs> I, well, what way to throw me under the bus? Yes. <laughs> what, you're trying to, like, frame me. <laughs> yes, I'm going to throw you under the bus. You don't yes and genocide. Okay, um, <laughs> you, you don't yes and rape. <laughs> you not yes and rape. Um, I'm having a very good time, but also I had a very good time at the beginning of the first part of this trilogy. I had a very good time at the beginning of Dragons of Winter Night. I had a very good time at the Dragons of Spring Dawning. Um, I'm not um, headed into the rest of this book. You know, my expectations are low. I did. um, You know, you've had your heart broken before. You know, I have. I have. you know, not just by this, but by some software companies. You know, yeah, it's yeah, really, it's, yeah. it's a weird thing that I'm Fool me through. once, shame on you. Fool me twice, won't get fooled again. Yeah. Yeah. She's sitting at the bar right now, giving you the eyes, and she's uh, fool, lick, licking the lime. You know yeah, you know what? <laughs> fool, fool me three times. You can't, you can't fool the fooler. <laughs> Is that George W. Bush? I <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that, that's real. Um, you know, I... I've learned my lesson um, with these books. I, I'm just, I'm along for the ride. I'm having a good time. Mm-hmm. It's, it's fantasy. I love fantasy. I love Crin. I love to learn. I love time travel. Mm-hmm. It's got all these things I like. Like I said, you know, it's that it's that crappy friend that you have. You know, you have a good time with them most of the time, but they might steal your wallet every now and then. Um, <laughs> it always needs bail money. Always, yeah, always. All the time. Um, Once again, I'm sorry, guys. Jeez. Paul, just stay out of Burger King. <laughs> I'm done. Burger Kings are off the table now. No longer going in there. Off the table. He's moved on to Taco Bell. Oh, my goodness. That's bad. They're, they're a lot more accepting than Taco Bell. <laughs> That's a bad bathroom to mess around in. Uh, um, I'm excited. Um, I like being here with these books. But... I was like, you know, I, I was looking for notes on this just because I was in such a rush. Mm-hmm. I was on Goodreads. The top comment on Goodreads called this the worst book in the Gr- Dragonlance universe. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, War of the Twins. I have the... come across people who say it's their favorite as well. So I think. Well, there's... so far, so, so far, I think, yes. I, I think there's there's mixed opinions out there. I know that okay, most people most people say the legend. A lot of people are saying the Legends is their favorite trilogy, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have a weak middle. I don't that's know. True. That's true. I don't know. That's true. You know, you can have a solid top and a power bottom. Um, <laughs> at any rate, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm excited to move forward, Bob. I've got you reeled back in your chair. Where, where, are, you, where are you sitting on War of the Twins? <laughs> <laughs> Volume two. Well, Dragonlance Legends. Well, um, so, so far. Well, well, well. Um, you know I. Uh, <laughs> well, Bob's trying to breathe, folks. By all means, please jump on iTunes, give us a five star review, uh, say something nice about us, write us a review. It's been a while since somebody wrote a review on iTunes. I was noticing that today. So by all yeah, means, got, we, please, we have gotten please jump some, on uh, some star reviews, but the uh, written reviews are really what drives it. Yeah, yes. yeah, right. And if you can't say nothing good, don't say anything at all. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Call us I, out. I love it. Talk smack. No, about on us. the, on the, I, no, I, no, 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 <laughs> on the, fo- on the reviews on iTunes. Oh yeah. Only positive on there, but. But the, on our Facebook page yes. can come the hate. Bring, so, bring, you can bring that there. So, Bob, now that you're breathing again, how do you feel? <laughs> you know, okay, I, it, I'll keep this short as much as I can. Come on, Robert. Um, Robert. This, this, I think, is a really strong beginning. I really like where this is going. Uh, you know, the, the, the mage fight between Fist and Dantalus and Raceland were really good. We're having a lot of really clever callbacks, uh, you know, in the time loop, both to the previous book, to the previous trilogy. I've got to time loop, uh, you know, juxtaposition. Klob has got to time loop, loop aspect. It's been really fun. Um, but I think this is a strong beginning. I am like you, Luke, worried because I have seen the same things of people saying that this is a the weakest of the book, perhaps the weakest of Dragonlance, the entire series. Although, how many people have read all 190? I don't know. 
that seems to be a statement that nobody can honestly make. Mm. By the you end know, of this, there's you probably probably five. will. By the end, maybe when I don't we know. get through the know. dragon lances. I can when see we're on episode four hundred and thirty-five. Yeah. I will tell you because it's already out, man. Arena of Istar, uh, <laughs> comic book. It's but, tough. <laughs> but how did you feel about War of the Twins, Bob? Yeah. War of the Twins, so far, uh, strong. I, I don't have much uh, to worry about. I really love um, Peg Leg here. <laughs> I like him as well. So Steel Toe. <laughs> I what have, did you I, call him? I have called him Peg Leg. He is now Peg Leg. No, what is, what, is that what you call him? Peg I think leg? so. Peg Leg. Is well, he's now Peg. Tent, he's, tent pole. He's, he, he's Peg, <laughs> Peggy Sue. I think we should redo a song version of that about Peg Leg. <laughs> he's not, but he's now Peg Leg No Face. <laughs> yeah, he's just <laughs> stuck in the ground. You sexually face. assaulted my gal, and I love you, Peggy Sue. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Steel toe. <laughs> Steel toe. All right. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, I I think it's great. So we'll see where we head out from here. There you go. Episode 21 in the books. Boom! We, we have become adults. Hey! hey. hey. Well. <laughs> okay, we have become adults. Will we act like adults? No! Um, I, I will grow old, but I will never grow up. All right, good. No. Doyo. <laughs> you know, I'm hearing the war drums of Gallifrey. I think Ood's outside. The war drums of Gallifrey. Jesus. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing him in my head. Don't you, don't you guys hear the just the little beat? The drum the drum beat. The ending drum beat. Yeah. Um, so, yes, thank, so thank you guys so much. Go. Thank you guys so much for uh, stopping by. Thank you so much for the endless love that we are receiving yeah. on the internet. Even You know what? Even if... Even if you come by and you say, like, hey, you guys, what, what are you even talking about? <laughs> I, I feel like, if if anything, everybody who has come by and sticks around, they're here for the banter. They're here just to yeah, hear, hear four, laugh with four us. idiots around, Maybe laugh at around us. A, reasonably pl- a reasonably priced microphone <laughs> talk to each other. <laughs> um, and, and something that is coming down the tubes, I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek. Ooh, um, if you're still listening... Mm, Yes, you get this. We're going to sneak down the pants just a little <laughs> bit more. Not not towards the, the that little E next to our podcast. Um, Paul and I are moving. Um, Paul's going to get his, getting his own place. I'm going to get my own place. Um, so and The this, podcast is ending. <laughs> yeah, um, actually. We're done. This, this is it. This, um, the reason. This is the breakup. We will never finish the Lance Trilogy. You, we don't even care. Oh, no, no. We're just going to tease you with this. Bob, Bob's just decided everyone. to do some solo work. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Bob and Yoko Ono. Uh, come over to me, uh, to the Aircast, where we're going to be reviewing all of Jane Eyre's books. <laughs> Um, no, so... Oh, God, I just threw up in my mouth So <laughs> what is... Oh, wait, there's only one book. It's called Jane Eyre. Okay. <laughs> so what is happening, the uh, podcast from the second floor guest room is actually moving. Um, we are going to record, for sure, part two of, well, the final, the second half of... Of this book. Of War of the We're going to end this of book, War and then the we're twins. pulling the plug and moving. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually moving... All of my stuff and leaving the studio in this house, <laughs> so we can record this. Right. Um, I it, believe we're going to record it on the twenty seventh or twenty eighth of August. Twenty eighth. We better. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. We have to. We have to. We have to. We are actually on a time crunch, and that's why I'm fine with. So you will maybe get a a, a thing episode before the end of the month. Again. Um. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, editing. Ed- editing. Eh. Editing Labor Day weekend <laughs> because we're Americans. We're, <gasps> Oh, man. <laughs> so, what is going to happen here? Um, you will get. I'm. Gonna, we are going to record a little video of us moving out and moving in yeah. to moving the studio at least. Mo- mo- moving the studio, and aren't we actually? We're going from the second floor bedroom. We're moving into a basement. Yeah. Yes, fun fact: it is actually I'm moving into my mother's old house. Um, so we will be recording in my mom's basement. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes! We have come oh, full circle yes, yes. back to the womb. Uh, to, be, to be fair, to state, to state fair, your mother doesn't live in that no, house. No, 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 no. It's her old house, her old house. Oh, I'm no, not... we can't make her have uh, her make can't her pizza rolls. Yeah, I want pizza rolls, man. Mom, pizza rolls, mom. Mom, the meatloaf. Um, <laughs> so that's, that, that's going to be going on. So you will for sure at least hear us for part one of this. You will for sure hear us for part two. If... 
you don't hear from us for a little bit. It's just because moving sucks. Um, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but just, that is not going to happen. Well, nah, we'll ju- be fine. Just in case, because we all do work at a school. Um, so, all we got to do is plug a mic in, even if it's all mm-hmm. echoey. No, we can't. no, no, no. We have to put no. up all of this. Stuff. We've got to have production quality. That's yes, true. we do. Dang it. Um, so that's what's coming down the pipe. We are also going to have, I'm just going to tease it a little bit here, a little bit of a, um, <laughs> new studio break-in party Ooh. involving a live stream. We will let you know yeah. when it's going to happen ahead of time so that we can all be there. It's definitely going to be on a weekend. And by you, or we mean the three people still listening at this point. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, tell your friends. Tell the ladies. Uh, at any rate, that, that's... Uh, <laughs> That's the end of it. Um, yeah. All right, I t- um, tell you what, I'm buying this round. We're gonna ki- we're gonna kick it off here, second to last podcast. So that means, sweetheart, oh, it's so sad. sweetheart, second to last podcast in this studio. I feel like we have not made it clear that nothing in this is studio. changing. We are still podcast. Yes, we're, we're just we're just together. going to be moving studios. Yeah, physically moving. Yeah. But sweetheart, I we I need four shots of the Zach Zarothian whiskey, please. Thank you for listening to this episode of Dungeons and Dweebs. There's even more adventuring to be had on our website, dungeonsanddweebs.com. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at dungeonsanddweebspodcast at gmail.com. You can also find Dungeons and Dweebs on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Find all those links at dungeonsanddweebs.com. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please help spread the word by leaving us a five star review on iTunes. The music for Dungeons and Dweebs is Fatal Fight by Royalty Free Kings and can be found at their website, royaltyfreekings.com. Dungeons and Dweebs is a Tim Gilbert media production. Copyright 2017, all rights reserved. And no part of the show can be reproduced, repurposed, or redistributed without the expressed written permission of Tim Gilbert Media. You got to watch yourself. Oof. We're recording, eh? Oh, we oh are, we're bud. recording. Oh, let's did... just send her. Let's get her. Let's get her going. Let's hey, you know what, bud? Just, uh, Freaking, you know. Let's just let her rip for a rip. Yeah, let's go. Just let's, out let's... for a rip, buddy, hey, bud. <laughs> just out for a rip. <laughs> I went up for a rip, and he just freaking. I just freaking. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, I've seen her all watching it.